Good afternoon, everyone. How is everyone doing on this Sunday? Let me see who is already in here. Um, Natural Born Queen, Miss Kimberly. I see Michelle, um, Deborah, Lachelle, Jacqueline, uh, Hakia, uh, Catalea, Black Swan, uh, Bless One. Hold on, y'all. Don't uh, uh, don't don't delete him yet. Don't delete his comment yet, y'all. I gotta take a picture of it. Now y'all can block him. Um, NXZW. Y'all can block Vito Don. I've already taken this picture. Um. Hakia, Monica, Queen Ray Baby, Edith, um, Edith, uh, Dark Chocolate. Hold on. <clears throat> Monica J, y'all, did y'all block Vito? Did y'all block him? And y'all take screenshots. When they come in here trolling so that they don't it really interrupt my live, y'all take pictures, y'all take screenshots of it, send them to my email, and then and after y'all get the screenshots, if they come in here, let them say a couple things, screenshot it, and then block them. Um, let's see. Hey, Playa Cole lady diva what's going on you guys how is everybody doing today how is everyone doing today y'all today i wanted to talk about oh and i want to send a shout out to g baby g baby thank you for the cash app i really appreciate that i think she sent the cash app after i got off of live but i really i didn't get a chance to send her a shout out thank you for the cash app hey sunshine uh, Shan Shan, I think this is in, in your neck of the woods. Now, this is going to be a part one and a part two. Of course, as I told you guys, my cousin works for the Indianapolis Police Department. And he's going to come on here and share some light. And that's going to be on a part two on this case, give updates on it. As of right now, her case is still cold, okay? Um, so I'm going to see, I'm going to get Boo on here one day next week. Uh, hopefully I can get him on here tomorrow. He just gra graduated, got his uh, master's, get ready to go to, he's a po he's a police officer, getting ready to go to uh, law school. Let's see. Um, it's hot balls. <laughs> Tyranny Allen. Um, who else? Did, did I say Black Swan? Well, damn, what done happened to, what done happened already? They was waiting on, yeah, they was waiting on me to come on, <laughs> but Hey, you know, I don't think they know what they're getting themselves into. Hey, hey, TLM Smooth, it's my first time seeing you in here. You doing okay? I hope you're doing okay today. Um, Donna Trevino. Jeff Lee, Sean, a uh, Shan, I call her Shan. Okay, you guys, today I wanted to talk about, um, hey, Miss Barbara, hey, Hakia. Um, I wanted to talk about Miss Jane Wafia. Of course, we, I, I think everybody can remember when Jane, uh, when this situation happened, she actually went on live and she had actually caught a guy that she i don't know if he was her boyfriend or i think he had been or someone that she had been messing around with okay before but she was still kind of dealing with right and i'm going to show the video of course um hey joy loves god and um i'm going to show the video Hey, Bonita Jordan. 
of what happened and then we're going to talk about it because her case is still cold right and it and it's the, it kind of goes in into i wouldn't say <clears throat> that you know it wasn't a domestic violence case or anything like that i i think it kind of goes into um it could be put into the category of some of these men killing these women when they can't control them right and we're going to talk more about that we're going to get law enforcement officers and stuff on here to kind of shed a lot of light on stuff like this because more and more women are and i'm not saying that what jane did as far as exposing him was right i know when people are in their emotions they do things that they regret right they kind of do things that they regret later on or they kind of do things out of emotions but i want to um yeah jeff lee i hope you're feeling better and y'all let's send prayers out to um um harold i wanted to start, talk about harold for a few minutes harold will come on harold had always been rocking with my my show and i really appreciate that he rocked hard and um harold last thursday harold got on my live and he had asked for me to drop the link but of course y'all know i don't drop the link anymore because of the hackers and um and so i asked him for his email address and i kept saying harold what what's your um uh no i kept telling him to give me his email address yet so i could send him the link or to send me an email so i could have his email address so i could send him the link and i kept saying i ain't harold ain't said nothing else is he still on here and uh, uh his his girlfriend got on last night you know and said to pray for him because that night just I, that very night that that happened the reason he wasn't responding anymore is because he got carjacked and somebody shot him and he's in the hospital so i'm glad that he still got his life um somebody yeah that that was that's sad like just to think about you know I mean you never know like things happen instantly the mere fact that he had asked to drop the link and then somebody turned around as at it you know that same night and tried to carjack him and shot him and i remember saying you know uh well i i, I told harold to uh, uh give me his email address and he didn't respond anymore i had no idea that had happened so i'm glad that he's okay we pray for a speedy recovery i'm glad that he still got his life because harold always rocks with my channel 100 and i appreciate that so much yes it, i mean things you never know what's going on like i just and when i and they said i was like that was last thursday and she said that it happened last thursday that night you know so oh my god oh my god so i'm, I'm glad that he's doing good we praying for jeff lee he's in intensive care so we pray for a speedy recovery for jeff lee he be tuning in he said from his hospital bed so i really appreciate that jeff lee and i pray for whatever your issues are for god to touch your body and heal you uh we send positive prayers to you okay um let's see yeah he is he's a respectful man he would get on here and go to bat for me i'm telling you he went to bat I'm, te I'm telling you, uh, Donna, I'm telling you. Hey, Miss Athea. Okay, y'all, we're going to get on into, um, let me show you guys the, get the video. Miss T, if you send Harris or something, let me know. I okay. I wonder if he's got a cash app because I would love to send him some money. Of yeah, I would love to, and 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 um, and Jeff too. You know, let's see. Hold on, you guys. Woman dies after shooting. Okay. So I'm gonna get into first, you guys. Um showing the video okay of her speaking about her walking back in and catching him let me explain the video for a minute though she spoke about <clears throat> her she was dealing with this guy 
and she had no idea that he was on the down low because they were thugs you know and she said she had left something in the house it was him and his supposed to be cousin this guy that was always hanging around them he had told her that that was his cousin and she said she forgot something and went back to the house after she walked out and the door was unlocked and when she walked in they was in a compromising position and she said they actually chased her you know so I'm gonna let y'all see the vi what the video, and then I'm gonna let y'all see the aftermath. Hold on, y'all. Yeah, I see the whole gate burn in front of my whole two eyes, two, two eyes. I had to come here and tell them about it. Listen, <laughs> happened earlier today. Hold on. Yes, yeah, she left her phone. Shun, shun. This nigga, y'all. That. Hold on. Let me wait for some more people to get on here. Let me, because y'all got to hear this story, because this is a good story. You know, we hear a lot of shit, but we don't never really get to see that shit. Because these niggas, they hiding. Listen, y'all, they're hiding behind the, the, the covers in the sheets around this bitch. The covers in the sheets. You feel me? The covers in the sheets. Hiding. They're hiding. So, I haven't, you know, discussing some shit with this nigga. We have some... We were doing some business, me and this dude. Now, I'm going to tell you, he did give me some head way back a long time ago. Lo long time ago, a couple years ago, like before I started fucking with friend or something, I took, no, he wasn't even, no, he wasn't even there. It was after, okay, it was about two years, how was it two years ago? About two years ago. I think when I first got, was on Orchard, he gave me some head. That's when it was, you know. Okay, so when I was on Orchard, then he gave me some head, right? Never really talked to him like that. You know, I had the old man. I had a lot of other shit going on. So I never talked to the nigga like that. Listen. No, listen, listen, listen. So I was doing some business with this nigga, right? Hold on. I had to run in there and still take my phone and run out. They chased me out the house. Hold on. Pants hanging and everything. Hold on. Screaming, how of you know? They was I said, fuck all of you. I don't give a fuck. You didn't even give me some money. I'm fucking telling everybody. You niggas got some money? We Hallville. Ain't nobody. Fuck Hallville. Hallville gonna have to pay. Because if not, it's, it's a story to be told. Oh, uh, y'all don't want to pay? Bitch, you was get, I let you give me some head and you had fucking niggas in their ass? Oh, no. Oh, no. This is not gonna fly. No, it's not. And I feel disgusted. I've been sick all day. I've been sick all day. Thinking about how I let you suck on my motherfucking pussy. And you're over there hitting the fudge out the back of niggas. I can't. I can't stomach it. But they say you far east side niggas been doing that shit. I ain't never seen that shit. Listen. I never seen that shit with my own two eyes. But today, I've been scoring for life. But today, I'm trying to move forward. Today has been one. Today, I've been traumatized. You niggas out here traumatizing bitches. Pull down on this nigga. Hold on. I grabbed what I came to get or whatever. He's like, come on over here to my uncle's house or whatever. Boom. Familiar with your uncle's house. Had been over there before once or twice or something like that. You know what I mean? So I had grabbed whatever, but I'm in a rush because I got to get back to the shop or whatever, you know, or whatnot. So, boom. I'm riding down the street. I done got the nigga being Speedway, right? I'm damn near to the tower shops on 16th Street. I'm like, fuck. I don't let my phone. So I start calling my phone and I start calling his phone and, and, and when nobody answering on my shop phone, I got a flip a little phone, a little flip. That's my shop phone, right? So, girl, yeah. So I'm on my little shop flip phone and I'm like, boom, calling my cell phone, calling his phone. He don't, ain't want nobody answer. So I'm like, damn. So now I done got back over there. I done parked right up by the front door, though. Thank God, because they chased me out of there. They was trying to kill me. Y'all, they tried to kill me. So anything happened to me, y'all know they tried to kill me today. Them niggas. And then when I got in the car, I started talking shit. If anybody knows me, that's how I get down. As soon as I get to the car, I get close to my pistol. I'm really talking shit now. So wait a minute. So look, I'm in here. Hold on. <laughs> I, I, I'm banging on the door. I'm like, boom, boom, boom. So I'm knocking on this motherfucking door. I'm like... I need my fucking phone. That's my money bag. I'm like hitting this motherfucking door. And I'm like, well, nobody comes to the fucking door, right? And I'm like, damn. Something told me to check the door. That motherfucker was unlocked. 
When I stepped in there, y'all. When I ste oh my God, my stomach hurts. My stomach hurts. When I walked in there, y'all. What I seen with my own two eyes. Hold on. Thank God my phone was sitting on the table right there by the door. I swung that door, but I said, oh. And I was in the oh, I couldn't even talk the words. The words. The words. I couldn't get the words out of my mouth, right? So I'm like, I'm trying to breathe. I'm like, and I just looked down and see my phone. I snatched my phone. They were standing there just staring at me. So them motherfuckers looking like the devil. They was like they was really trying to kill me. So I just grabbed my phone off my so I was like, so I jump in, so running. I done jump back in my car. Remember I told y'all parked up by the door, right? So I get in my fucking car. And as I'm backing out, I'm like, hey, you motherfuckers, y'all better come up off some money. Y'all be talking that big money and shit. Give me a couple of bands or something now. Cause this right here, this is unacceptable. So I'm out the window like, you motherfuckers is trifling. And you bitches think y'all ain't gonna get me. So wait, dude said, come on back. I said, nah, you on bullshit. I was like, motherfucker, send it. Cash at me, motherfucker. I said, if you don't cash at me in the next hour, I'm telling the whole goddamn city what the fuck's going on. I was just, I told him just cash at me five bands. That's all. Shit, you in a $50,000 truck? I can't get five bands? I can't get five bands? So I was just like, get sent, cash at me five bands. That's it. And I ain't gonna sell a soul. You know, it won't be nothing on nothing. Huh. That motherfucker, look, I caught his phone. He kept saying, bitch, I'm Hallville. Bitch, ain't nobody gonna go against. I said, who the fuck is Hallville? Don't nobody give a fuck about Hallville. Who the fuck? Does anybody know what the fuck is? How, what the Hallville was? I was just Indiana. sitting on there and had a bag on Hall, at Hallville. I sat in you bitches' faces and made a bag. What are you talking about? Enough to get me to my next location. So fuck a Hallville. Who are ya? Hallville, who is it? Anybody left? Who is this nigga? And so, hold on. I gave this nigga Apple opportunity. I even gave him an extra hour to come up with the money. I was like, listen, just run me the bag and I'll just try to forget. But at the same time, nigga, you could have let me know you was getting down like it. He said, bitch, I ain't got to tell you shit, bitch. I don't owe you no explanations, bitch. He's talking like a G, though. This nigga talking like he on gin, though. This nigga is talking like he's on gin, though, okay? I'm telling you, he's talking like a G. I said, boy, they told me they was doing it out east, but I didn't know y'all was doing it out west like this. I believed out east. I done heard about out east. I heard about you niggas out east getting nasty than a bitch about a bag. Y'all niggas, hey, 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 East, them niggas getting 20, 30 off white men of her. I don't know. But what I am going to say is, Jamal, you got the right bitch today. Because I take it personal because you gave me, I, you administrated head on me before. So now I got to go, well, I stay in the hospital. So you know what I mean? They, I probably would have known if something would have happened to me behind the shit. But at the same time, you're not safe. You're not safe. You know, it's been a long time really since I touched you like that or whatever. But motherfuckers ain't safe out here, y'all. It's definitely not safe. They're sick. They're nasty. And they're just out here to get bitches. And they're out here. This, man, that shit is real. That shit y'all see in ATL, that shit is so fucking real. And it's starting to come down. It's, it, it, it's tumbling down to our city. They're taking over. Everybody needs to check their nigga out straight up because these niggas are playing like they this and that and got the keys to the city and all this and that. And they under the sheets and the covers. So I'm just saying at the end of the day, I've been super traumatized today about some niggas once again because I had to witness some shit that I didn't come to see or nothing like that. And I don't appreciate it either. Because you know what? If you get down like that, nigga, you need to let motherfuckers know. You don't just do that kind of shit and just think it's okay. And you was looking at me like you was going to do something to me. Bitch, I'm out of here. Yeah, bitch. I want to let them go right out my little court, honey. I don't move without my pistol. Never, bitch. Should have went to the door with that motherfucker. Good thing I didn't. Then pop one of them niggas. Hey.
All I'm saying is, guys, you females don't make it no better. Y'all keep accepting these niggas back, and they just nasty, and they just do what the fuck ever they want to do and stuff. And now they just getting wild. I guess they just tired of us bitches. Now they fucking each other and shit. The shit's getting wild. All I'm saying is be safe. Boat up. Boat up on your dude. Boat up. I'm telling you, bowed up on these niggas because ain't no telling what's, what's going on. I done seen this shit right here. I'm everybody suspect. <laughs> uh, after, after this right here, all you niggas is suspect until I determine otherwise. All you niggas on the list. All you niggas. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm cool. I should have known. You know what, though? I'm going to tell you what the first clue was. The nigga was getting his toes done. This should have told you right here. The nigga was getting his toes done, y'all. And you know how you can change the face on live? You can change the face of the person that, you know, like you're looking at them. He was changing them into men and stuff. I understood when he was changing it to like women or characters. But when you was changing them into men, why do you have the men on your feet, baby? What are you doing here? I'm like, I thought that was weird. That was the clue. See, it be clues. It be signs. I, and I just showed somebody that shit and was like, ain't this weird in a bitch? Why is he turning the camera into a man touching his feet? I thought that was disgusting. That wasn't number two weeks ago. And man, here we go. I walked into a mess. I walked into some smutty, nasty, disgusting shit. And I'll probably never be the same. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Star, I'm gonna never be the same. Never. And these little dusty ass niggas, they gotta be stopped. They're fucking disgusting. Now I'm wondering where you got the money for this truck and shit. You're probably fucking white men downtown. You hang downtown all the goddamn time. You down there fucking them white men. What's going on out here in these streets? For the better Indianapolis, for the greater Indianapolis, you niggas need to knock that shit off. Y'all infesting our little town. We all gonna be dead. I ain't touching nothing else. I don't want no head off you niggas or nothing else. I'm cool. I'm cool. Y'all done show me what time it is around here. Shit, I thought we were safe. We sorry than a bitch around here. Y'all ain't gotta worry about it. But one thing for certain, two things for sure, that bitch will never be back on this line a day in his motherfucking life. Mm, bitch, you should have just paid the bread. You the one walking around like you got so much motherfucking money, nigga. Well, you better get. You could have. You should have got me quiet then. Five thousand. I would have thought maybe that you were sincere about being. Girl, right? You would have ran me about five G's. I would have thought that you know what I mean. I could have maybe took you seriously. You maybe you know I don't know, but you you declined. You thought you was girl screaming that Hallville shit and thought somebody was gonna give a fuck about that shit. I don't give a fuck about a Hallville. Nigga, I sat over in Hallville by myself and made a bag. Was leaving out of there with hundreds every day. What are y'all talking about? I don't give a fuck about fuck a Hallville. The fuck? Dusty motherfuckers. And now y'all out here passing out shit and anything else. I don't know what y'all got going on. But what you're not going to do is never get back on my line again, you weird-ass motherfucking dude. But today was your day to get exposed. Clearly, today was your day. Because I'm here to tell you. I'm at the top of the mound. I'm telling you like Moses, like I told you I was going to do. And I told you I was going to do this. Motherfucker, they, ch hey, they chased me out the house, though. Hold on. They motherfucking pants was hanging. Hold on. God, wait a minute. Listen. Listen, I've never seen such. Thank God for the people that were outside and shit and kids and shit. They had to stop at the door because they got the top of apartments. They got the little hallway. They had to stop at the door because there were kids and shit getting out of school and stuff. And people outside, thank God. But I hopped in my truck and was, I mean, hopped in my car and was talking hella shit. <laughs> I was talking hella shit. Boy, hey, everything I wanted to say, I couldn't say at that moment. But after I got to my car, I told them motherfuckers the truth about they trifling asses and told them how fucking dare you motherfuckers. Ugh. Ugh. And you kept on trying to tell me this one, this nigga was your cousin. So it wasn't your cousin or wasn't he? I don't know. Y'all got, I don't, I mean. Mm. And kept having them in your videos all the time. 
Just some dude I had never seen in a day of my life. And come to find out, you and this nigga sticking and moving. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm about to have to get out here, y'all. Because I got some shit going on. But I just, I had to just get this off of my chest. I had to just bring it to the community because this type of shit right here, it gotta be stopped. And if something happens to me or something like that, at least you guys know the truth, okay? Because he he's quite upset about the change of events that have occurred at this point. And um, I don't even know who the weirdo he had with him or nothing or none of that, but all that Javio shit, I don't care about it or none of that. But the truth is the truth and it is what it is. And next time, take my, my threats for real. I don't know. Why would make, what would make you think I won't go tell nobody? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Nigga, I don't fuck with you like that. You weird ass nigga. This, these niggas is really crazy. I'm Hallville. Okay. You're Hallville. Nigga, I'm behind the fair, bitch. I'm behind the fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? I used to live down the street from Nakia. Nigga, who cares? Who fucking cares? The ghetto boys was living next door to me. Who cares? The fuck? Listen. <laughs> I, was, I was in Hallville. Nigga, no nobody give a fuck about that shit. Y'all fucking and y'all freaking in Hallville. I've had enough of it. So, from here on out, y'all. Y'all better check these niggas out. Straight up. I mean, I'm talking about taking back to the third grade. Talk to the principal. I'm talking about we got to really start checking these niggas out because I would have never thought in a million years this nigga was going to come out of a bag like this today. This right here, it, it, it just killed my little heart because you be trusting people. You do believe, believe in people. When they show you, you totally different from what you really thought. These niggas got on masks, y'all. They got on whole masks. Be safe out here. That's the only thing I can say is be fucking safe. Be safe. I'm I'm disgusted, but it's gonna be all right. But if anybody needs any tires, come on out, Castleton. <laughs> tons of tires. I got them all. I got tons of them. And uh, I'll get back with y'all. Okay, y'all. So then the very next day after she did that video. This is what happens. Five o'clock Metro Police are asking for your help in their investigation of a morning crash and shooting that left one person dead, two people in the hospital, and four cars damaged. RTV6's Cameron Riddle is live at 30th Street and Lafayette Road where the crash happened with what we are learning tonight. Cameron. Well, good evening. Late this afternoon, we have learned that police are now asking for the public's help in putting the pieces back together after one woman was killed and a man was injured after what uh, ended in a crash here at 30th and Lafayette Road, but may have started as a shooting. IAPD officers were actually in the area when this all began, and they tell us they actually heard multiple gunshots and then the crash. Take a look at some of this video that you are uh, that we are showing you right now. It may be hard to look at, but this is what kept the intersection closed and buzzing with police officers for at least six hours. Police tell us four cars in total were involved and the two people injured were both taken to the hospital. IMPD says that unidentified male was taken to the hospital in serious condition. The woman was also transported to the hospital with a gunshot wound but did die at the hospital. We talked to a man who witnessed the crash this morning. He says the driver of the terribly damaged blue car somehow walked away after being slammed into from behind while he was sitting at that light. And all of a sudden, the Camaro came shooting all the way down the street at least 90 miles per hour and hit the car and spent it three times. And that's when it hit the Altima. Now that witness went on to say more about what he saw, including what happened 
what he saw when one of the drivers involved got out of his vehicle and walked over to one of the other cars involved. We are not yet showing you that portion of the interview just yet. Out of respect for the family, IMPD tells us they have not yet uh, finished notifying all of the next of kin. At this hour, they also have not revealed any suspects, but they have said that this shooting and crash was, quote, isolated and directed. Exactly what that means is still unclear tonight, but we are working to learn more. Coming up tonight on the news at 6, hear what a school bus driver says she heard as she was driving through this area this morning in her school bus. We're live tonight on the West Side. I'm Cameron Riddle, RTV6. Sounds like a Wow. And then there's one more, you guys. Friends of loved ones releasing balloons into the night sky tonight for a woman who was targeted in a shooting. Janae Wafield was also involved in a multi-car crash on the west side yesterday. Wish TV's Dan Klein was there as her two daughters were among those gathering tonight to remember her memory. Yeah, loved ones tell me Janae Wafield was loving, caring, liked to have a good time. But it's what she posted on social media 24 hours before her death that's so chilling. Chase me out of there. They were trying to kill me. Y'all, they tried to kill me. So ain't that happened to me? Y'all know they tried to kill me today. Family and friends gathered about two hours ago in the parking lot of Municipal Gardens at 19th and Lafayette to say a prayer and release a number of brightly colored balloons into the air. Now, Janae was 40 years old. She would have turned 41 on St. Patrick's Day. Next month, that is. She was killed yesterday about a mile and a half away at West 30th and Lafayette. Now, she was the driver there in the yellow Camaro. She died at the hospital yesterday. Police aren't sure if it was the shooting or the crash that killed her. Janae's daughters, Beyonce and Jayla, were too upset to share their thoughts with me tonight, but they stood on either side of their cousin as she remembered her aunt. I just want to say I'm going to miss her so much. I love her so much. I love you so much. And it's messed up that she had to go like this. Now, police have not given any information about the person they think is a shooter or a possible motive, but again, tell us the shooting was targeted. They're also not commenting if social media played a role in the killing. China Chestnut tells me she's confident detectives will be able to find the killer. She says an arrest will not heal their pain, but it will help them feel better and have some peace. Okay, you guys. So, you know, when that story happened, I kind of followed it, you know. Um, it happened back in 2000. And, um, and one of the reasons is because the other half of my family lives in Indiana. They, lives around, they live around the Indianapolis, Anderson, Muncie area. And um, so I kind of followed that, you know, a little bit because I, I knew it was, you know, my, and, and because one of my cousins worked for um, Indianapolis Police Department. And so I, when I was following the story closely, now they did get video, and I forgot to pull that up. They got video of two of the young men that um, that supposedly was involved. It wasn't a really clear video right before they went and did that. Um, they did get video of them. I wish I could have pulled. I wish I had thought to pull that up. But what I saw was a lot of people were saying that she had issues with quite a few people. And so it was hard to pinpoint whether those two young men that she was talking, the two guys that she exposed, um, it was hard to pinpoint if they were the ones that did it or not. A lot of people were saying, well, they don't know if they did do it because, you know, she had had issues with other people. They said she um, allegedly allegedly now i don't know if that's true had had issues as such as blackmailing people um and things of that nature but i find it weird and maybe whoever some of her enemies was was waiting for the opportunity you know to get her when they saw that she did that that there was some issues with somebody else but i i don't know you know i don't believe in a whole lot of coincidences although that could have happened but I find it weird that the day after she exposed them, that happens. Now, I saw on, on social media where they had people getting on 
and saying that the whole story that she told on those guys was a lie and she was kind of mad because one of the guys wanted nothing else to do with her i don't know about that i i think her story is believable she had a, a whole lot of emotion in there and i kind of i kind of watch people you know when they said that i kind of went back and watched that video a couple times there was definitely a lot of emotion you know um i i think she did walk in on them me personally and then i went and found the 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 social medias of both guys because you know one of the guys they didn't really talk a whole lot about but um i mean i could believe it looking at them together you know you could tell they weren't cousins um let's see every color in the crayon box yes you guys as y'all come into the room please hit the like button as y'all come into the room let's see how many likes we got but i, I kind of want to hear what you guys got to say also you know about this situation do you all think that hold on y'all you know about the situation okay you guys um let's see hey deb is that keeps coming up so do you all think that this had anything to do y'all that text message threw me out do you all think that this had anything to do with her exposing those those men or do y'all think that um she had issues you know she already had enemies and they felt like that would be the perfect opportunity you know i was trying to find also the video of the two guys that they said because they said that someone had shot at her um before allegedly they claimed that she had tried to blackmail someone before and listening to the video and i don't like giving excuses you know what i mean i don't like to in cases like this you know i don't i don't like i don't like to bring up although it has to be looked at issues that she may have had with other people because it is definitely essential but you know I want to know what y'all think. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to find that other video. I am trying to find that video. I don't think it's on here. It might not be on here. Might have saw it on social media, but it should be on here. I wanted to show the young man that she was talking about picture. And show the suspect, but okay, I, I don't I don't see it on here. It may have been deleted. I don't see it on here, but I definitely think you guys. I do. I think I I do believe that her getting on that live, exposing those young men, and it may not have been them that did it themselves but i actually think i believe that it, it it is more than likely that they sent somebody to take her out they took somebody to take her out and i think that is definitely unfortunate when you have young ladies losing their lives you know in situations like that now i know a lot of people said that she should not 
have have opened her mouth she she should not have said anything but at the same time you know um whether it was true or not i believe that it was true i do i i believe that it was true um thank you hot cake i believe that it was true and i believe that um I believe that they sent someone to take her out. Now, the people who had sh shot at her before, we don't, they don't, I don't guess they know who that was, but her tire shop, she owned a tire shop in Indianapolis. They said it had been shot up before, you know. Yeah, I believe it was true also. And, you know, if those people, they had shot up her tire shop before, if they really wanted her gone, they they probably would have consistently did it, right? I don't know. But I don't think they waited until she had issues with somebody else. I think the people that she exposed. And then, too, you know, I, in listening to her, there may have been, a, people were saying there was a little extortion involved you know, um, that she tried to extort them. But I think, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, that rather they had given her the five grand or not, she knew that they were not going to give her five grand. That's the reason why she asked. That's the reason why she said that. I think she knew that they were not going to give her five grand. And I think that they that she was going to, to tell it anyways because she was too emotional. She was too emotional. I agree 100 percent with you. Yeah, I think she was gonna tell it anyways. And when they chased her, but I think she should have used better judgment. When they chased her, when she caught them and they and they chased her, when she caught them to having sex and they chased her out of there, I, I think she should have laid low. You know, jumping right on live, I don't think she used her better judgment. Although now, y'all know how I am about that. They had no right to do anything to her but um i think she should have used better judgment because them chasing her meant that they was trying to catch her to do something to her at that point so i think she should have used her better judgment when she said they chased her with their pants down that means they panicked and she if they had called her they weren't gonna beat her up they was gonna take her out you know, these are thugs. I was looking at, they're supposed to be history. These are thugs that was possibly gang affiliated. So, of course, they didn't want people outside of their gang. Because <laughs> usually, you know, they, a lot of times they be, all of them be knowing because they all be kind of doing the same things. But they don't want people outside of their gangs to know what's truly going on. Especially if they looked at look at looked at as these hardcore thugs. Yep, as these hardcore thugs. I mean, but it that can happen. Yeah, but running your mouth anywhere, you know, people feel like it. It well, the hot cake. I think now at this day and time, you know, saying anything, people have are so screwed up now, and so emotionally messed up. They feel like. You know, even if you don't, you say something they you don't they don't want you to say. They they will try and take your life, not just the internet, but but anywhere. You know, um, because it's a lot of screwed up people. But regardless to what happened, regardless to what happened, because I've heard a lot of people say that you know she should have kept her mouth closed. She should not have said anything. I mean, the mere fact that they chased her. I think she should have used it. And I know she was out there in the streets too. Okay. She seemed like, you know, just from listening to a lot of people, she was out there in the streets too. She, you know, she owned her own tire shop, but she was out there in the streets too. And so I guess her thoughts would not have been mine because I'm very methodical. Okay. Um, just the mere fact that they chased her. I, I would have been trying to get something documented because at that point you would have known that they had it in them. Um, that if they had called her, I don't think they would have threatened her. I don't think they was chasing her when she called them to try and um, do anything other than take her out, you know, and a lot of people don't, don't really think that way. 
But I, when I first saw that, I was like, I, I, I think she should have, I think she should have tried to get something th documented. But from what I could see, she was out there in the streets too. So she probably did not think about stuff like that. You know how a lot of people don't really like to, they don't like the police. They don't really like to deal with the police, right? Um, William Barry says, if I caught my girlfriend with a woman, I would join in. <laughs> well, William, I, you know, I don't know, but you know, but it, it uh, uh, to you know, to each his own. But it's gross to me, either either way, you know. But to each his own. I, I just, I could, I could never. The thought of another woman trying to touch me sexually is disgusting to me. I, I don't get, you know, because I don't get down like that. That's weird. No one in no chats know who I am. Jane Doe, what 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 do you mean? I, I think I know who you are, but you okay. Dark chocolate says them be the main ones, Miss T. Uh Hakia says, uh, yeah, no reason to kill when you engaged in it. <laughs> uh, Black Swan, why are you saying my chat name? Who are you? What hood you from? Come on, come on, y'all. Come on, uh, Jane. God made Adam and Eve, not even. Not even Eve and Adam and Adam. My dad will pay my sisters to be quiet, especially when watching TV. So I want to know what what do you all think? Do y'all think that? Um, I was trying to find video of him, but he kind of wiped his social medias and stuff clean for a while. And the reason I was able to, uh, some people snapped some some pictures from his social media before he wiped it clean, right? And then I kind of found him up under a, a completely different name. And he didn't really have, you know, like months later, he didn't really have any pictures. And I and I kind of stopped, I kind of stopped following it, the video, um, but didn't realize she had got killed. Yeah, the very next day, they took her out the very next day. And the case is still cold. I apologize for the chat room. Uh, thank you. Y'all, yes, please hit the like button. I think there was a misunderstanding. I handled it. Okay. That's right. We're family in here. At Jane Doe, because I respond to your phone. Yeah, we're family in here, Jane Doe. Y'all, come on, y'all. I ain't, uh, Trevino says, I'm back. I was on the road listening. Okay. You're going live. What's her downfall? Her going live was her downfall. She should have laid low, like you said. Yeah, I think she should have laid low. I don't think she used her better judgment, you know, I think a lot of times from looking at old videos that she had did, I, a lot of times when people rah-rah, you know, they be ready to get to get with it too. But, you know, um, and, and they don't really think, you know. Um, and like I said, when they chased her out of that house, when they when they when they chased her out, she should have laid low and she shouldn't have went to that shop for a couple of days. But now understand she had had some type of, I don't think it was a, a, a boyfriend girlfriend relationship, but her and that man had had her and that they had had a sexual relationship. And from my understanding, he liked her because they said she was wild and stuff, but she was very smart. You know, she had her own tire shop. And she made a lot of money at that tire shop, from what I hear. And um, they said he kind of likes to be, a, you know, around women that has something going for themselves to, to see if he can get them to, you know, even though he was supposedly out in the street, you know, I guess for the gifts. I mean, that's just what I was reading. So that's allegedly. 
I think she should have kept it to it. Yeah, I, I would have. I would have definitely kept it. Kept it to myself. I would have kept that. You know, to myself. Um, I mean, there was no need to go on social media and blurt that out. You know, there's a because you know it's just certain things you don't you shouldn't you shouldn't even blurt out. Um, and that would have been one of them. And um. Cause you don't ever really know a, a person's trigger a person's you know triggers you know like i always get on here and say my triggers are somebody that tries to control me that I, and we all have them that is my trigger when i feel like somebody is trying to control me it it does it it does something to me real bad you know because i you know because we all have can do what we want so when i feel like somebody is trying that's just one of them um yeah my family on top of that the other blogs want to see us fall over here anyway so everybody who on here we got to stick together oh absolutely you know we don't stick together you know this this and the thing about it is my blog was never i'm not a shock jock you know i'm not a shock jock i'm not on here to to try and ex expose anybody you know, um, that's that's not my thing. Um, my thing is to get on here and vlog, and and it goes back to when I say somebody try to control me. It's to get on here and vlog as I want to do it, okay? And it does not come with trying to find out about any other vloggers and and who they are. I I I think that's 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 a problem when that happens, um, and so. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm leave it at that. That's that's that. Uh, the hot cake too says if there are um, because I, I have to be careful about what I say on here. Uh, the hot cake so two says if they're on the DL, uh, well, they was definitely on the DL. And the thing about it is, if you listen to her, she said that they were sitting there getting their toes done, he or he was getting his toes done. And he was able to, um, you know how you can put those little characters or whatever on, on your phones if you got an iPhone. He made the he made the person that was doing his toes a man instead of a, a woman. So I'm sure she had been dibbing and dabbling with him. So you can tell when something ain't right. I'm gonna tell y'all something. As for me, and I, I have not, I have not. I've talked to men, but I have not dated a whole lot of men. But I've talked to quite a few, like on the phone, and I'm I I, I watch people very closely. Okay. And I'm gonna tell y'all something. A woman knows of her man and, and knows what he's capable of be, uh, be, better than anybody. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I remember this one time and I got to tell this story. I was talking to this guy and I'm not going to say what his profession was, but we ended up meeting. This was some years ago, years and years ago. He was like, you know, well, let's meet up, you know, at this, at this place, you know, I get off. I was working at the police department, you know, at night during that time. And he was like, you know, when, um, when you get off, let's let's meet up here, and I should be getting off at where I work. I was like, okay. So we met up at this place, right at this restaurant. I'm not, yeah. He, we met up at this restaurant. He was sitting across the table from me. I'm like I said, I always watch people very closely. I do. I watch them so closely. It's almost like I know their I know their next move before they do it. I promise you. I promise you. And he said he was sitting there smoking a cigarette and I was looking at him because, you know, that was, you know, my really our first time really just, you know, being together, conversating like that. And he 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 crossed his legs. Y'all, he had a cigarette in his hand. And this was a dude that was sound. You know, he was very mad. He, he had been very masculine up to that point. But I was just getting to know him. Right. 
and he was sitting there smoking a cigarette. He crossed his legs and he had the cigarette in his hand and he stuck his chest out. And I said, this is the last time that I ever meet this nigga anywhere or talk to him or have anything to do with him. I knew at that point something was not right. And so later on, I remember this girl, uh, a girl um, um, that I knew that had actually known him from a long time ago. She she didn't say nothing at first. She said, so did y'all meet? I was like, yeah, we did. You know, we, we talked on the phone. He called me a hundred times a day. We, you know, we, we, we met and um, she said, how did it go? And I said, well, girl, you know, he crossed his legs and he was smoking that cigarette and he stuck his chest out and I can't get back. I can't get past that. I said, I, I just, I can't get past that chest sticking out, okay? Because uh, he had that cigarette in his in his hand like a woman with that chest stuck out with them legs crossed. I said, I, I, I can't get past that. There's certain things I can't get past, and that's going to be one of them. And she had known him for a very, you know, known of him for a very long time. And the only thing that she said was, you know what you saw. Don't second guess yourself, right? <laughs> So she had known something, and I know she had kept asking me about him, but she had already heard something. But I saw it. I saw it. I couldn't get past those legs being crossed and that, that chest going out. I said, oh, no. Uh -uh. No, not the chest and the, and the legs crossed like a woman and smoking a cigarette. That that was it. That was it for him. Uh-uh. So going back to jane they call it her name, her name spelled like jane but it's it i you know but they called her janae going back to janae janae said janae saw that janae had <laughs> janae had been with 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 him janae had been with him so there's always some signs and sometimes people choose to overlook those signs i just don't overlook nothing especially nothing like that child i just believe in people living their truth don't come to, you just gonna live your truth child leave me alone <laughs> she said he was trying to get pointers from you miss t <laughs> lord have mercy mm -mm. He showed his true colors by showing that I'm telling you, he showed his true colors. That was really that was no need for us to um to 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 meet up and go out or nothing anymore. And I'm gonna tell you something. He had a swag about him. He did. He had a swag about him when he would arrest people. Uh oh, I almost told it. Uh oh, I want to put it in the atmosphere. Um. But he had a swag about him, just like when he would walk, you know. He just, it was just, it was just this thing about him, the way he did stuff. And um, that did it right there. Cause I thought he was just hard, you know. I just he, he was real masculine, like his conversation was off the chain. I enjoyed him. But after that, that was it. You don't cross your legs and you smoke a cigarette. I think, I think he had he had let his guards down so much. I guess he, you know, he didn't know how close attention. <laughs> Monica says, stick to your kingpin. <laughs> uh, Jane says, if they like the same sex or both sex, they need to just be honest because eventually it will be found out. A lot of people should have more respect. Absolutely, because some women don't mind. Some of these, some of these women don't care. Because I've heard, I've heard women say, I've heard people say, a woman is okay. It, not, not this woman though, not me. You know, as long as it's not another woman. I don't. That's kind of sick to me. That you know, that's that's really kind of sick. But, um, but you know, to each his own. But I've heard that. <clears throat> so, child. I done told y'all these folks is sick. These folks sick around here. But either way, you know, even though what what she did, a lot of people, <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, uh, I, I, you know, some people can deal with it. 
uh Catalan said right monica i was about to say stay stay in new york he hardcore as they come he is hardcore as they come <laughs> except for except for when he talked to me i he said i'm, I'm mush him up that's why he don't talk to me much but we're, we're we're friends though he's really a good guy i don't know what he's doing in his life now i you know i'm i don't even want to ask him i'm scared to ask him but we don't talk i'm gonna tell you something we don't talk but like once every six months he'll call me i'll see a new york number and i know it's him he keeps my number he's had it for a long time he keep it and i'll see a new york number it's always a different new york number now that i'll see you know one to facetime he likes to facetime and we'll laugh and talk and we'll laugh like and people won't even don't even think he laughed if y'all knew who I was talking about, y'all look at some of his pictures and some of those videos they got out of him. He don't even smile. But when we on FaceTime, he we laugh hard. He we always talk for like four or five hours on FaceTime. And then he'll say, Oh, it's getting dark. I gotta go. I'm gonna call you back. And I don't hear from him no more for like six months, right? You know. Um Oh, child, I, I, it's, it would be hard. Oh, I hope I, it would be hard for me to believe he's he's on the down low, though. I don't believe that. Um, but a lot of these dudes don't want their business out because they got to keep a certain rep. Let's see. So, uh, sweetheart, something always with your phone. Um, Young Dolph, I don't know what my phone uh, took and did saying that. Acting up in front of company. I know who you're talking about. Let's see. Um, his name used to be Lucky, but he changed it to Ace Boogie. <laughs> I ain't telling. I'm not saying. <laughs> uh, ooh. <laughs> I'm not saying who. All right, for those of you all that's just coming into the room, please hit the like button. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. But definitely hit the like button, y'all. Today we're talking about Jane Wafield. This happened in um this happened in um Indianapolis, Indiana back in in 2000, and her case is still cold. Now, a lot of people can't understand why her case is still cold, and that's why I want to get my cousin on here. Uh, to talk about, you know, it seems like the, all of the pieces are there. You know, why is her case still cold? But why do y'all think her case is still cold? Because if you look at some of her pictures, you know, she seemed to have had a lot of people around her. I'm sure somebody know. I'm sure somebody know. Me too, uh, the high cake. Um, I'm sure somebody knows what happened. Why do y'all think her case is still cold? Why do y'all think that uh, Indianapolis have not uh, solved the case? I watch teach shoes, body language, etc. Uh, Hakia says, um, I see her that too. Jeff Lee said he's shocked. Are you shocked that the case is still cold? Jeff? I, I, stop, Remy. Are you shocked that the case is still called? Be quiet, Remy. Jeff, are you shocked that the case is still cold? Child, she be I have a, a lake in the back at the back of my house. And child, she runs to that patio back there and start barking at them folks when they're at that late. Um, a call, please, people not talking. Because uh, people not talking. It seems like to me when this happened too, some of her friends, you know, kind of, well, one of her friends kind of, for some reason, you know, Turn on a little bit because they need local FBI stepping in uh, to help solve murders as soon. I, I I agree. A lot of times, if it 
it takes the FBI stepping in. And when there's a federal case, there's a, a show that I did um, <clears throat> on this girl named Andrea, and this was in Muncie, Indiana, and that's the reason why I did that show. Her name was uh, Leandria, okay? Leandria Mullins. She's a female white. And her dad used to always call and um, and I would put, you know, I would do the show and then I would, of course, upload it. And I remember when her dad started talking about the corruption in Muncie, Indiana. I'll never forget. And how the man who had, they felt like had made their daughter go missing had not been arrested because um, he was cousins with the sheriff. He had a really good lawyer. He had a lot of, he had money. And I remember I was sarcastic because those people, he, she, he was like, we don't have the money. And his daughter had had a baby with the man. He was like her sugar daddy. She was a lot younger than him. And he and his wife was raising the baby. Stop. And they said his daughter... Be quiet, Remy. They say his daughter left, and they don't know where she left and went, so they had coached him. The sheriff wouldn't do nothing, blah, blah, blah. So I remember when he did the show. He was He's a male white. His name is Don. I remember when he did the show. At the end of the show, I remember saying, after he told me about all of that corruption, I said, if anybody knows what has happened, contact the FBI because it's not even safe, you know, to um, contact the local authorities in Muncie. And I kid you not about two, I said, and hopefully the sheriff, and I was just being sarcastic, hopefully the guy, and, and, and they'll find out what happened to her before, hopefully, and I was being sarcastic, he have a, he croak, he, he have a heart attack and croak. That's why you have to watch your words. I'm serious. About six months later, that man had a heart attack and died. And, and this is what happened. The FBI actually got involved because of the corruption. The FBI stepped in, got involved because they was doing a lot of other stuff. Like it was some human trafficking going on and some more stuff. The FBI stepped in in Muncie, Indiana, and got involved. A lot of those local politicians there was involved in some human trafficking, too, that connected to his daughter. And the man who is who, who was her lover, who is believed to have taken her out, actually had a heart attack and died. And then about a month later, his cousin, the sheriff, sheriff that had been protecting him, had a damn heart attack and died. I said, Lord, I got to be careful with my words. Uh, Catalyst says, I'm telling you, natural born, I wouldn't either. <clears throat> hey, d -Ma. For those of you all that, that's just coming into the room, y'all, please hit the like button. But today we're talking about uh, Miss Jane Wafield. Jane was killed um, um, in Indianapolis, Indiana, and it is believed that she was taken out after she went on... Um, after she went on YouTube and exposed, well, on social media and exposed um, her then, she tried to say that they were not together, but I was reading and I was looking at some stuff when I was, you know, because I, I did quite a bit of research on it in the past that him and her were never a couple, but they were messing around. She had somebody, he's got a baby mama, so they just kind of messed around on the side, but her feelings was more vested in him than he is was in her. So, uh, you know, looking at that, it was it was very, you know, you could see the emotion. So, um I I believe it they the guy even, you know, tried to do damage control before um he he deleted that particular page and he was like, "Well, you know, she she was lying, you know, we wouldn't do that, but that never happened." You know, she was mad at me about something else, but I, I kind of believe that what she said was true. I mean, me, I believe it. And I believe they sent somebody 
to take her out because he was saying those two dudes that was on camera they don't even look like me of course not they wouldn't look like him if they send somebody else to do it that's normally how they do it but i wouldn't recommend anybody getting on social media and doing stuff like that there's so much emotionally emotional instability now and um it's it's like people are so screwed up they don't necessarily know right from wrong right uh well they know right from wrong they they, they don't have self-control and so um and when you start exposing people that's involved in stuff like that is especially if they're supposed to be thugs you know anytime somebody will kill you over a piece of chicken they'll do that they, they'll do anything okay Uh, the hot cake says, no, nah, I'm good on those fun boys too. Your monkey, not my, my thing. Your monkey, not my thing. Um, that's why I said yesterday that everything isn't for the internet. Absolutely. Everything is not for the internet. <clears throat> and like I was telling them, Demon, I wish that she had used her better judgment. Yeah, I wish she had used her better judgment when they chased her. When they chased her, I wish she had, you know, sat down and thought about, <clears throat> she did say on there, it, but she did tell it. She said, if anything happens to me, they did it. So evidently she knew what they was capable of. She knew what they was capable of. But I wish she had sat, sat down and thought about it and just kind of went underground for a little while. Um, because they chased her out for not for for a reason. Uh, I don't know why folks take the social media to out folks. Yeah, that's I, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, because they don't care. Just another brown skin woman kid. Absolutely. Yeah, killing for chicken is bad. <laughs> it is. <laughs> And so, like I was saying, y'all, it all goes back into the emotional instability of a whole lot of people. You don't ever know. You don't ever know a person's mindset. You don't even know their mentality. Some people are mentally ill. And then you're talking about these young men who have an image to uphold. And I'm not saying that it's right. It, it was definitely wrong. Nobody has the right to take anybody else's life, you know. So it was definitely wrong. Um, no matter what they say, no matter what, it it never it should not have happened because they are not God, okay? Um, and the, it is against the law. But you know, um, people need to think when they're when they're doing stuff like that. Um, but me personally, I do believe that the people that she outed the day before were the ones that took her out they had somebody to go take her out and i do believe that um she saw what she said she saw because i know a lot of people try started trying to dispute that and saying that she tried to blackmail them um yeah that's one we're talking about that she started trying to blackmail them um and things of that nature and um they didn't give her her money and that's why she went on there and did that i don't think so um she was too emotional that she's that it was something else that happened and it didn't have nothing to do with them not giving her that money because she was i think she as emotional as she was she was going to tell it i am a woman okay as emotional as she was she was going to tell it if they had given her the money she was going to tell it anyways and then too you know, some people were saying they think she jumped on there and told that because they, she said they started threatening her immediately. That's why instead of jumping on social media, she should have been jumping on to let them know I'm walking into the damn police station. See, I'm putting this on record. Okay. Um, That's what she should have been doing. But um, unfortunately, you know, she didn't do that. A lot of people don't believe in, in bringing the police into stuff. You know, I guess I'm I'm the the whack girl. 
because I do. Jane Doe says the dude was finna blow a guy's brains out over twenty dollars. I hear I gave him twenty bucks and told him don't do that over twenty bucks. She was uh, disgusted and shocked. Yes, she was. Hey, look, some of these dudes that's been in these penitentiary, the penitentiary, act like they was hard on the block, but they ain't telling. They had SOS on their body. Just ask. Well. You know, I worked for the sheriff's office until I decided to leave um, for many, many years. Okay. For many, over 10. And um, I'm telling you, um, I know that it happens. There are, there are a lot of me, there are a lot of men that are on the down low. There are, there are a lot of them that's on the down low. Um, they come into jail and they're hardcore thugs. They come into jail and they live a completely, they go to jail and live a completely different life. And then they get out and, 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 you know, go back to their woman and their children, but they're doing stuff on the down low. And this man had a woman and some children from my understanding and this man that she caught him with, he, he she said he always said that he was his cousin. But before they, you know, wipe their pictures off, you know, of, of um, social media, like I said, some people got some snapshots of them. These men used to be sitting all up at breakfast like they was on a date together. But I guess if you tell people that's my cousin, they wouldn't question it. <laughs> They'd be all out to dinner together when no women around. And this man, this other guy that she was messing around with, he he had he had a baby mama. He had somebody. So you think he'd be up on them breakfast dates and them dinner dates with her, right? Um, what's the percentage on guys in jail on the DL? Um, about 45%. It might be higher now. It might be a little higher. I'm telling you. I always used to say this to all the ladies, and I don't mean no harm to you fellas that know how to keep, know how to um, control yourself, because everybody ain't the same. I wouldn't touch a man that had been in jail past six months, and I'm just going to tell y'all that right now. I wouldn't touch him. If he's been in jail past six months and he keep going in to jail and can't stay out, I wouldn't touch him. And I'm just gonna tell you that now. Cause he might have some undercover habits to put it professionally because they don't see it as being on that side of the fence. Right, I told y'all that I interviewed this young lady that had uh, AIDS. <laughs> Rest in peace young dog said, good thing I never been okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama once said, dang, I served three years. <laughs> I didn't say everybody. I, 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 I didn't say, I did say not everyone, though. There's a lot of men that got self-control. They just, they beat their meat, you know. They <laughs> um, I'm sure that some of these guys that are actually violated against their will come out and take it out everybody. Yeah, because the younger they go in, um, yeah, they they try they they'll try and violate them, especially when they're very young. I don't think that an eighteen year old, a uh, eighteen year old that has to go to an adult prison should be put into population. I I, I don't because and and the reason I say that is because a lot of times especially if they're gang affiliated some of these kids get into these gangs and we know what happens right sometimes a lot of these ogs that ain't no good will put them up to go do the dirty work if they're young and these guys these kids don't have a history of going in and out of jail and then their first offense they get they you know they're 18 years old they go and commit some type of murder or something they going in they ain't used to them hardcore thugs so guess what they do? They make it. They they make them their girlfriends, 
um and and you know they try to be a little bit more protective you know because I, as i told y'all the sheriff's office is extremely afraid of lawsuits okay so th they try and watch them but just think about the bigger jails with those guys there that don't have anything to lose and some of those men that go in there they're more feminine like and they said that they they call them their women they have to walk the yard together and i hear i'm talking about in the bigger jails uh, a negro that ain't got nothing to lose i mean that that's got life ain't getting out no more you know he ain't got nothing to lose that's why those guards kind of just let them do what they want because they they probably would rather die you know um Jeff Lee says, I was in jail for 18 hours in Florida. It was mistold, taken identity. Oh, wow. No, it ain't about self-control. They want these young, badass, new millennium cookies. Trust me, they're getting taken. <laughs> yeah, that's nasty. Yeah. And I tell my husband, if you get caught up in a crime and got to go to prison, I'm only waiting six weeks and no time for him to go uh, through medical. I'm finding me some someone else. And I'm going to tell y'all something. A lot of times when um, those people, those they would come in there and when you have to book them in and stuff, they would, um, when you would have to book them in, you know, you had to do a, a medical on them. And they are uh, the majority of them had med alerts. And that would alert the nurses and stuff that there was a pre-existing condition. And oftentimes it was some AIDS. And then sometimes they get in jail and get AIDS because they, oh, they they up there messing around. Um, I was talking to a guy I know, and he was crying about his nephew who was in on a double murder. And he told T, they are effing my nephew in the A, and it ain't his fault. Oh, wow. I mean, it's the next best thing to God and money, but damn it. Hey, Teresa. For those of you all that, that's just coming in, y'all, please hit the like button. Also, if you have not subscribed, Please subscribe. Let me see how many likes we got, you guys. We should have 100 likes. We almost got 100. Let's let's get it up to 100. If you have not hit the like button, please hit the like button. If you haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button. <laughs> But yes, you guys, we was talking about Miss Jane Wafield. So do y'all think that her case will, do y'all think they're going to solve their case? Do y'all think that they're going to get it solved? Y'all believe anybody will come forward? It's been, it's been two years, going on three. It's been two years going on three. Do y'all think that um um hold on you guys? But at any rate, y'all, regardless of what happened, as I always say, it still gives no one the right to take somebody's life, right? Although what she did was not favorable to a lot of people. It still don't give anybody the right to go and take somebody else's life. They was dead ass wrong. And when people dead wrong, they have to they have to suffer the consequences of what comes with being wrong, right? So Ooh. Um, Queen Tamara, love you. I'm out. Love you too. Thanks for coming in, Jay Muhammad. 
um akia says open up this case she needs yeah she needs justice they don't care she needs someone to make noise about it and her yeah i think her family should and believe it or not i believe her family uh, more than likely knows what really really happened and that is that those guys sent somebody i never say never with cold cases it's possible it could be solved yeah yeah uh uh Cadillac, y'all check you uh email yeah and and, and the reason I, I like talking about cases like this you know is because number one it's a cold case and we definitely um want cold cases to be solved of course we do we, we want all cold cases <clears throat> to be solved because contrary to what she did, she did not deserve to lose her life. Sooner or later, someone would start feeling guilty and unable to sleep would tell it. Yeah. That's true. But I sure don't think that the uh, young men that did it will. Because see, it's probably going to be several people caught up in it. I don't think... Um, that the guys that she caught did it i think they sent somebody else to do it i think they sent someone else to do it that's what they did so it's gonna be some more lives you know some more people caught several people caught up in that one Cause you know once they're caught they're going to tell who on who sent them as they should yeah i'm rubbing my dog y'all hear her purring she is purring But like I was saying, y'all, the one, one of the reasons why I do shows of this nature is because, like I said, I want to bring awareness to cold cases. And I also want, um, I want for, um, I want for people to see things of this nature do happen. Now, what she said was not favorable. Um, I, I think people should start thinking more logically when you don't know a person's mindset you know when you don't really know what they are capable <clears throat> of doing it's it's best to um to go and get it documented because when they chased her out as i was saying demon you know because we kind of i don't know if you caught it when we played the video of her talking about it but um when they they chased her out she said they chased her out when they had their pants down that means if they had called her they weren't catching her to try to beat her up they was catching her to try and do something to her yeah they were going to hurt her uh right then and there i remember the story tam mm -hmm. so i think that when people if something like this happened i think instead of going live about it she, if she was going to go live she should have let them know that um i'm at the police department filing a report you know, to let them know that she was documenting that and she was going to do something about it because um, because um, I think at some point with her knowing that and she should have laid low for a little while, they was probably going to try to get her anyways because their secret was out. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I think <clears throat> last thing she should have done was took that to social media and that's why I said yesterday um, on our chat that Everything is not meant for social media. Mm -hmm. And especially, especially if you're getting ready to expose somebody uh, in such a uh, manner, the way she did and on that type of topic, <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially if this guy's in the hood walking around like they hard and, you know, they run in the streets and they uh, street goons or whatever, you know, they thought they were doing or uh, who they were trying to, uh, so differently, but she should have done that at all because uh, they really, <clears throat> I don't know if they did it, 
or like you said, they had somebody else do it, that do it. But she definitely, uh, she was going in on them, and I think she was doing a little bit too much. Now I'm not justifying what they did to her, because of course it was wrong. But you know, sometimes you gotta you gotta pull back. She was she was doing a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I had also heard that he was just using her for money. You know, now I don't know if that's true. Yeah, that's but... what I, <clears throat> that's what I heard too. Mm-hmm. Women, you all says they laughs at his blood and choke him and punch him in the face. All four percent is corrupt. Hold them accountable. Police brutality, black lives matter and gay lives matter. What 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 is he talk about? Hey, uh, Miss Teresa, how are you? And Cowan, they laugh at his blood and choke him and punch him in the face off for precinct. He told, "Are you talking about police? We're not. That's not what we. Wait a minute." Police brutality, Black Lives Matter, and Gay Lives Matter. Who are you talking about? You? Yeah, yeah. Who are you talking about? We're talking about Janae Wafield. Who are you talking about? You are you all. You, this is the first time I ever seen you up in here. Right. <clears throat> Everybody's life matter, even an animal. So what are you talking about? But yeah, Tam, you know, uh, I'm going to tell you something. That DL community was exposed years ago. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and these guys been out here on that, you know, and it's sad that you don't know who <clears throat> or what type of man you get involved with. You really don't. That's true. You don't know. And that's why I say, you know, a lot of times... Uh, if you know a little bit of their background and their history, I think sometimes when you first meet somebody, that can kind of help you better make your decision on whether or not if you're going to get involved with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think for her, and, and just from what I had read up on, is that he has somebody already. And you heard her say that she has somebody on the video. Yeah, but they were still messing around, but her emo she was more emotionally involved as it relates to him, and it was a financial thing for him. I think so too. I think mm -hmm. so. Wasn't he living with her? No, he was living with his baby's mom, and she was pregnant. Girl, oh wow! <laughs> yeah, and the man that he was he had around them. Well, she always, she said he always said it was his cousin. Now I, I found some pictures. I well, I'd seen some pictures before they kind of wiped them away. And real talk with Tamara, don't be rude. Hey, no, Tam, let's not even we we on something else tonight, yeah. please. Okay. I blocked them. So you got okay. Yeah, keep I'm it, not dealing keep, with that. I'm blocking keep that. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna deal with that. Continue your thought. Yeah. Um. I think that y'all when they stay when they start coming in because you know it'd be getting good, I block them. Snap a picture of them, a screenshot, and then block them. Um, what was I getting ready to say, Dima? I I forgot. But you know, I was just saying that uh, you talking about him having a baby mama. Uh, yeah, pregnant. oh, his cousin. He the man that he was with. I saw some pictures of. Him. They'd be sitting up at breakfast early in the morning. And they would um, be out at dinner, and he was telling everybody that that was his cousin. So I'm sure he mm -hmm. told his baby's mom the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. See, you know, a lot of times when we speak of monogamy, I don't know if that word even exists anymore or if that's even uh, something that people practice anymore. You know, uh, it seems as though these days nobody wants to be with one person. And then with this down low stuff going on, uh, you you don't know until sometimes, a lot of times in her case, uh, you catch it. You know? 
Yeah. You have to actually catch them in the act uh, for it to be revealed because they definitely not going to tell you. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I don't know what the problem is and just uh, being honest and up front telling somebody, you know, hey, if you if you buy, say that. If you on a down low and you like your thing, then do that and just live uh, your truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people can't do that because, you know, the thing about it is in this day and time, some of the women will accept it. You know, the, I've heard people say, I've heard people say women <clears throat> say I'd rather him. I'd rather him be with a man than another woman. Now, that's not no. how I feel, but. No, I can't accept that. Mm -mm. Yeah, I, I can't accept that. I, I, I need a straight man. You know, but um, hey, that that's a lot of people. Are, you know, but I I, I think because they were trying to say what well, she she was lying and no, I did I looked at her emotion. I looked at that several times. I think she saw what she said. She saw. She was I believe her. quite emotional. Yeah, I believe her. Mhm. Mm I believed her. And because like she was out in the street herself. You know, she didn't. I think she also wanted to put it on record. That's why she said, if anything happens to me, they did it because they mm -hmm. chased her with their pants down. Mm -hmm. If they had got a hold of her in that house, uh, it would have been a wrap for her right then and there. You notice she said it's a good thing that she thought the, the, the table was right there in the front because well, she had left her keys by mistake. Yeah, um, and she could snatch her key, her car keys off the table and run out. And the only reason they stopped, she says, because the kids was getting off of the bus. Mm. And they started; they was walking up because they had chased her. Mm hmm. How long has she been involved with him? Uh, probably some years, from what I I could understand when I was used to read about this case. She had been messing with him on and off for some years. And she was emotionally involved, you know. Mm -hmm. um, she was more so emotionally involved, and you could tell. And I think the fact that she caught him with that man, and then he started talking to her like that. She said he told her, "B I ain't got to tell you nothing," you know. She said he started getting real jazzy. Yeah, defensive. I, yeah, very defensive, and 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 it, almost as if I don't, I don't give a damn about you. I ain't got to yeah. tell you nothing. Mm hmm. Uh, Catalea wants you to drop. I mean, I, I mean, email her the link if you didn't already. Yeah, I already did. <laughs> yeah, I already to uh, uh, emailed it to her. But you know, I have to kind of think about too, like the guys that are locked up, Tam. Uh, the, you got some guys that's locked up that are strictly uh, heterosexual. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, often think about what it does to them if they are uh, violated against their will when they're locked up and how that affects their mood or their behavior uh, once they are released from a prison or jail. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you got uh, some people, I'm sure, some guys, I'm sure, that have been violated against their will because, see, not everybody getting ready to roll like that. You got a lot of them in prison that'll fight you to the death because they're not getting ready to uh, let you do that to them. And then you got some that are not fighters because they've been too busy out here pulling uh, poles while they was on the street and don't know how to fight. Uh, so they don't fight back and they uh, go ahead and let it happen. They get punked uh, when they locked up. But I have to wonder how it affects them uh, when they get out their behavior. You know, does that make them go out here and commit uh you know, just make them bitter and just just want to hurt people. Because, you know, you see a lot of these cases when somebody can just walk up to you and just take your life. You know, that to me is like an internal anger or something. You know, you have to ask yourself, where is it stemming from? So, yeah, you know, I think that when they get out, they just uh, so bitter about what happened to them on the inside that they come out here acting a stone fool mm -hmm. and don't have compassion for uh, life or uh regards for human life mm -hmm. that's true Cat catalea i send it to you the link oh okay there she is yeah but she definitely should have uh handled that a little bit differently hey catalea 
Your phone acting up a little bit. You there? Catalea. Okay, I think she's having some. Oh, okay, she got a phone on mute. Your phone is on mute, Catalea. But yeah, and I think more and more shows, you know, that's that we're gonna do more and more shows like this, D Mom, because I think it's important to talk about stuff like this and keep this out there. You know, this young lady, even though she did something, you know, that was not favorable, he still had no reason. They still had no reason to take her life. You know. Uh -huh. Um, and it, it kind of it kind of goes back to, you know, um people being emotionally unstable, you know, and feeling mm -hmm. like they can do things and get away with it. She should not have done it. I I, I, I never would have. Right. I never would have, especially when you got these hardcore thugs that that pride themselves on being thugs and killers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, she shouldn't have did it. But I say, you know, when you have victims like this, Tam and Catalea. Hey, Catalea. Hello, D. Ma, how are you? Okay. But you, when you have victims like this, <clears throat> and uh, they basically already told you assault their own murder. If they told you uh, prior to their death, if something happens to me, this is uh, who you look at. And then something actually does happen to them. In my mind, they've already solved their own uh, murder. Mm -hmm. And um, how, how you say the apple don't fall too far from the tree. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. That's true. Yeah. Um, I had a co-worker. He was a uh, gay. He was openly gay. Uh, he said he'd been gay since he was two, but that's a whole nother story. But he would always tell us when uh, men were coming to the shop where they were getting, whatever they were getting, he would say, let me look at them. Not so much trying to get at them, but let me look at them and I'll tell you what they're about. Like, if they're about that life, will they consider it or are they already living it? And I tell you not, out of almost every man that a woman let him see or her man, it was about, I'm going to say about eight out of ten of the men he said will fall for, for what he said or will entertain what he had to say. Wow. And, they were, and they were men that were just like regular, hard work, regular men. But he was like, I, I bet you, you let me look at them and just not so much try to come on to them. It's just certain things that I guess he knew to look for. And he, he, was, he was maybe wrong on about two of them. But for the most part, he didn't miss. He knew who he knew who would entertain what. Oh, my. Yes. And then my uncle, who was a firefighter, <laughs> it was a two prominent figures in this area who used to always get stuck and they would have to come into the, you know, the emergency room, they would cover them up. But, you know, everybody kind of knew what was going on, but it was so torturing for like the children and families because, you know, it would get around. They would come in, you know, just have to cover them up and I guess they did whatever to get them unstuck. People are doing this kind of stuff. So I could see her getting on social media being surprised. I'm not saying it's right. I think I would not have done that because they get mad. They get really mad about that kind of stuff. But people do some wild things in the bedroom. And I guess they think taking the social media is going to make it right. Where sometimes it fuels the fire. Why do y'all think she got on social media? She was uh, emotional. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's why I say we have to uh, even me at times have to practice what we preach about getting emotional and letting those emo emotions make us put ourselves in uh, a situation. Yeah. Because she definitely let allowed her emotions to overrule her senses. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Um, do y'all think she felt like they would take her out? Yeah. Yeah. I think she knew it the way she said it. She knew. It. I think that's why I wouldn't have per se went on on live with it. But 
you know, it was too late then, but she knew what, what was going to come with it, but especially if she had been dealing with him. She wasn't a stranger to his activity. So she knew what she was doing uh, or had done. The repercussions could have been him hurting her because they don't like, they play dirty, and they don't like when you call them out or if they're found out. They don't like that at all. So there was a chance she took. Maybe she thought doing it on social media maybe would shame him and he wouldn't bother her. But to me, that like up the ante. On her yeah, life. fueled it. It fueled mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. That's just wow. my personal thing because they don't. They don't. When I say don't fight dirty, I mean they don't fight normal. They fight. You know, it's a just a dirty kind of fight. Mm-hmm. So. I agree. I agree. And I don't think the now the ones that pay to have her taken out, I don't think they feel an ounce of guilt. Mm -mm. No, because they stand together. They stand together. They stand together. And it's um and they'll help one another because they just, you know, that's just how they look at it. And some men have to realize um, a, another thing that my coworker let me understand is that some men who have been to jail or who are power trippers, they may not per se, they may, they may do someone, but they may not allow someone to do it to them, if that makes sense, because that's their part of still maintaining their manhood. Yeah, they call them the top and bottom boys. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's a weird thing, but it's but I'm like, it's it's still the same thing, but they feel like as long as you're not doing me, then we're good. But I'll do you and you know, we'll you know, we'll make it last forever. You know, the, so it's just it's a it's weird thinking in behind it, but when they are found out, they become just dangerously outrageous with murder or hurting someone or doing whatever because now they know the secret is out. Mm -hmm. And yeah. for her to go to social media like that, you know people were like going, that's like a, a bull a bullhorn. So you know everybody was coming and looking at that. So that was just, I don't think I would have did it, but as far as how far she took it, but maybe she was so shocked, you know, that that's what she took to, but I wouldn't have pressed play on that or start a higher use again alive. I wouldn't have done it. Yeah, if I her, if I was her out of late, I would have laid low. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think I would have just got my keys back and up at the door and we would approach that subject another time because he was obvious he was in the act. So I would have just walked on out. But, mm, mm, mm. Um, that is a topper. I was trying to find video of them because there is video of the guys. There actually video of the guys that did this to her, and she was a pretty girl. Hmm. Um, they may not have them up anymore. Uh, let me see. <laughs> I think I found one, y'all. Well, no, actually, I didn't. Cause he hurry up and kind of uh, he shut his all of his social medias uh, down. Okay, so here are the suspects because there are two suspects that actually did this, but I think that they were they were sent, you know. Um if they could ever figure out who they are, um I think that um they'll be able to get to they'll be able to get to um the, the people that sent them. But I think they were gang affiliated, so it was probably an order. For those two to go do that. Mm -hmm. Hold on, here's the video right here. <clears throat> y 
Y'all, these this is a surveillance video. Of the young men, it's hard for them. I mean, it's not very much. Yeah, it'd be hard to make that out. Hell, it could have very well been one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could have very well been one of them, but it would be extremely hard. But they what was he it. stooping down to do? He got he was getting something out of a trunk. Mm. And I wonder how they know that that was them. Now, are they supposed to be the two that uh, took her out? Mm -hmm. and that was before it happened. Oh, because I was looking, I was thinking, wasn't she driving a yellow uh, Camaro or something? Uh -huh. I think they were saying that was moments before it happened. So evidently, they identified them by the car they got in or something. Because you know how the police only show, they only put some of the video out. Right, right. So evidently, in order for them to put that out, it was based on the vehicle that they was in. And then there was witnesses out there. And mm -hmm. remember the guy on the news said, um, I don't know if he was in here when it, you when I played it, Demon. No, no. The guy on the news said, um, based on um, the, uh, respect for the family, because the guys actually, after they shot her, they said she was going down the street like 90 miles an hour when she hit a pole. Mm -hmm. And then one of the guys actually got out and went over to her car and finished her off. And she actually had somebody sitting in the car with her, but they were unharmed. They got out and ran. Oh Can you play a piece of it, Tim, for the people okay. that came in late? Yeah, I was going to say people that came okay. in late. Okay. So you can see it. I think Calvin and Michelle was trying to figure out what happened, too. Okay. I see the whole gay bar in front of my whole two eyes. Two. Two eyes. I had to come here and tell them about it. Listen. <laughs> Happened earlier today. Hold on. It, this nigga, y'all, that... Hold on, let me wait for some more people to get on here. Let me... Because y'all got to hear this story. Because this is a good story. You know, we hear a lot of shit, but we don't never really get to see that shit. Because these niggas, they hiding... Listen, y'all, they're hiding behind the, the, the covers in the sheets around this bitch. The covers in the sheets. You feel me? The covers in the sheets. Hiding. They're hiding. So... I have been, you know, discussing some shit with this nigga. We had some, we were doing some business, me and this dude. Now, I'm going to tell you, he did give me some head way back a long time ago. Lo long time ago, a couple of years ago, like before I started fucking with Fran or something, I took, no, he wasn't even, no, he wasn't even there. It was after, okay, it was about two years, how was it two years ago? About two years ago. I think when I first got, was on Orchard, he gave me some head. That's when it was, you know. Okay, so when I was on Orchard, Nigga gave me some head, right? Never really talked to him like that. You know, I had the old man. I had a lot of other shit going on, so I never talked to the nigga like that. Listen. No, listen, listen, listen. So, I was doing some business with this nigga, right? Hold on. I had to run in there and still take my phone and run out. They chased me out the house. Hold on. Pants hanging and they're right there. Hold on. Screaming, Howville, though. <laughs> they was I said, fuck Howville. I don't give a fuck. You niggas better give me some money. I'm fucking telling everybody. You niggas got some money? We Howville. Ain't nobody. Fuck Howville. Howville gonna have to pay. Because if not, it's just a story to be told. Oh, uh, y'all don't want to pay? Bitch, you was good. I let you give me some head and you had fucking niggas in their ass? Oh, no. Oh, no. This is not gonna fly. No, it's not. And I feel disgusted. I've been sick all day. I've been sick all day thinking about how I let you suck on my motherfucking pussy. And you're over there hitting the fudge out the back of niggas. I can't. I can't stomach it. But they say you far east side niggas been doing that shit. I ain't never seen that shit. Listen, I never seen that shit with my own two eyes. But today, I've been scoring for life. But today, I'm trying to move forward. Today has been one. This, today I've been traumatized. You niggas out here traumatizing bitches. Mm. Hold down on this nigga. Hold on. 
I grabbed what I came to get or whatever. He's like, come on over here to my uncle's house or whatever. Boom. Familiar with your uncle's house. Had been over there before once or twice or something like that. You know what I mean? So I had grabbed whatever, but I'm in a rush because I got to get back to the shop or whatever, you know, or whatnot. So, boom. I'm riding down the street. I done got the nigga being Speedway, right? I'm damn near to the tower shops on 16th Street. I'm like, fuck. I don't let my phone. So I start calling my phone and I start calling his phone and, and, and what nobody answering on my shop phone. I got a flip a little phone, a little flip. That's my shop phone, right? So, girl, yeah. So I'm on my little shop flip phone and I'm like, boom, calling my cell phone, calling his phone. He don't, ain't want nobody answer. So I'm like, damn. So now I done got back over there. I done parked right up by the front door, though. Thank God, because they chased me out of there. They was trying to kill me. Y'all, they tried to kill me. So anything happened to me, y'all know they tried to kill me today. Them niggas. And then when I got in the car, I started talking shit. If anybody knows me, that's how I get down. As soon as I get to the car, when I get close to my pistol. I'm really talking shit now. So wait a minute. So look, I'm in here. Hold on. <laughs> I'm banging on the door. I'm like, boom, boom, boom. So I'm knocking on this motherfucking door. I'm like... I need my fucking phone. That's my money bag. I'm like hitting this motherfucking door. And I'm like, well, nobody comes to the fucking door, right? And I'm like, damn. Something told me to check the door. That motherfucker was unlocked. When I stepped in there, y'all. When I stepped. Oh, my God. My stomach hurts. My stomach hurts. When I walked in there, y'all. What I seen with my own two eyes. Hold on. Thank God my phone was sitting on the table right there by the door. I swung that door, but I said, oh! And I was just, oh, I couldn't even talk. The words, the words, the words. I couldn't get the words out of my mouth, right? So I'm like, I'm trying to breathe. I'm like, and I just looked down and see my phone. I snatched my phone. They were standing there just staring at me. So them motherfuckers looking like the devil. They was like, they was really trying to kill me. So I just grabbed my phone off my ass. I was like, so I jump in, start running. I done jump back in my car. Remember I told y'all I parked up by the door, right? So I get in my fucking car. And as I'm back in there, I'm like, hey, you motherfuckers, y'all better come up off some money. Y'all be talking that big money and shit. Give me a couple of bands or something now. Because this right here, this is unacceptable. I'm out the window like, you motherfuckers is trifling. And you bitches think you ain't gonna get me? So wait. Dude said, come on back. I said, nah. You on bullshit. I was like, motherfucker, send it. Cash at me, motherfucker. I said, if you don't cash at me in the next hour, I'm telling the whole goddamn city what the fuck's going on. I was just, I told him just cash at me five bands. That's all. Shit, you in a $50,000 truck? I can't get five bands? I can't get five bands? So I was just like, get sent, cash at me five bands. That's it. And I ain't gonna sell a soul. You know, it won't be nothing on nothing. Huh. That motherfucker, look, I called his phone. He kept saying, bitch, I'm Hallville. Bitch, ain't nobody gonna go against. I said, who the fuck is Hallville? Don't nobody give a fuck about Hallville. Who the fuck? Does anybody know what the fuck is? What the Hallville? What? I was just sitting over there. I got a bag on Hall at Hallville. I've sat in you bitches' faces and made a bag. What are you talking about? Enough to get me to my next location. So fuck a Hallville. Who are you? Hallville, who is it? Anybody left? Who is this nigga? And so, hold on. I gave this nigga Apple opportunity. I even gave him an extra hour to come up with the money. I was like, listen. Just run me the bag, and I'll just try to forget. But at the same time, nigga, you could have let me know you was getting down like it. He said, bitch, I ain't got to tell you shit, bitch. I don't owe you no explanations, bitch. He's talking like a G, though. This nigga talking like he on gin, though. This nigga is talking like he's on gin, though, okay? I'm telling you, he's talking like a G. I said, boy, they told me they was doing it out east, but I didn't know y'all was doing it out west like this. I believe they out east. I done heard about they out east. I heard about you niggas out east. Getting nasty than a bitch about a bag. Y'all niggas, hey, uh, 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 East, them niggas getting 20, 30 off white men of her. I don't know. But what I am going to say is, Jamal, 
you got the right bitch today because I take it personal because you gave me, I, you administrated a hit on me before. So now I got to go, well, I stay in the hospital. So, you know what I mean? They, I probably would have known if something would have happened to me behind the shit. But at the same time, you're not safe. You're not safe. You know, it's been a long time really since I touched you like that or whatever. Did y'all hear what she said? <clears throat> she said, I take it personal because you gave me a she said, well, you administrated head on me. It's almost like she wants to say you gave me A's or something. Did y'all catch that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she I catch her saying that. Mm-hmm. And she changed over. Her, but yeah. But motherfuckers ain't safe out here, y'all. It's definitely not safe. They're sick, they're nasty, and they're just out here to get bitches. And they're out here, this, man, that shit is real. That shit y'all see in ATL, that shit is so fucking real. And it's starting to come down. It's, it, it, it's tumbling down to our city. They're taking over. Everybody needs to check their nigga out straight up because these niggas are playing like they this and that and got the keys to the city and all this and that. And they under the sheets and the covers. So I'm just saying, at the end of the day, I've been super traumatized today about some niggas once again because I had to witness some shit that I didn't come to see or nothing like that. And I don't appreciate it either. Because you know what? If you get down like that, nigga, you need to let motherfuckers know. You don't just do that kind of shit and just think it's okay. And you was looking at me like you was going to do something to me. Bitch, I'm out of here. Yeah, bitch. I want to let him go right out my little car, honey. I don't move without my pistol. Never, bitch. Should have went to the door with that motherfucker. Good thing I didn't. Then pop one of them niggas. Hey, all I'm saying is, guys, you females don't make it no better. Y'all keep accepting these niggas back. And they just nasty and they just do what the fuck ever they want to do and stuff. And now they just getting wild. They, I guess they just tired of us bitches. Now they fucking each other and shit. The shit's getting wild. All I'm saying is be safe. Boat up. Boat up on your dude. Boat up. I'm telling you, boat up on these niggas because ain't no telling what's, what's going on. I done seen this shit right here. I'm everybody suspect. <laughs> I'm after, after this right here, all you niggas is suspect until I determine otherwise. All you niggas on the list. Right. All you niggas. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm cool. I should have known. You know what, though? I'm going to tell you what the first clue was. The nigga was getting his toes done. This should have told it right here. The nigga was getting his toes done, y'all. And you know how you can change the face on live? You can change the face of the person that, you know, like you're looking at them. He was changing them into men and stuff. I understood when he was changing it to like women or characters, but when you was changing them into men, why do you have the men on your feet, baby? What are you doing here? I'm like, I thought that was weird. That was the clue. See, it be clues. It be signs. I, and I just showed somebody that shit and was like, ain't this weird in a bitch? Why is he turning the camera into a man touching his feet? I thought that was disgusting. That wasn't number two weeks ago. And man, here we go. I walked into a mess. I walked into some smutty, nasty, disgusting shit. And I'll probably never be the same. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Star. 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 I'm going to never be the same. Never. And these little dusty ass niggas, they got to be stopped. They're fucking disgusting. Now I'm wondering where you got the money for this truck and shit. You're probably fucking white men downtown. You hang downtown all the goddamn time. You down there fucking them white men. What's going on out here in these streets? For the better Indianapolis, for the greater Indianapolis, you niggas need to knock that shit off. Y'all infesting our little town. We all gonna be dead. I ain't touching nothing else. I don't want no head off you niggas or nothing else. I'm cold. I'm cold. Y'all done show me what time it is around here. Shit, I thought we were safe. We sorry than a bitch around here. Y'all ain't got to worry about it. But one thing for certain, two things for sure, that bitch will never be back on this line a day in his motherfucking life.
Mm. Bitch, you should have just paid the bread. You the one walking around like you got so much motherfucking money, nigga. Well, you better get. You could have. You should have got me quiet then. Five thousand. I would have thought maybe that you were sincere about being. Girl, right? You would have ran me about five G's. I would have thought that you know what I mean. I could have maybe took you seriously. You maybe you know I don't know, but you you declined. And you thought you was going to scream that Hallville shit and thought somebody was going to give a fuck about that shit. I don't give a fuck about a Hallville. Nigga, I sat over in Hallville by myself and made a bag. Was leaving out of there with hundreds every day. What are y'all talking about? I don't give a fuck about fuck a Hallville. The fuck? Dusty motherfuckers. And now y'all out here passing out shit and anything else. I don't know what y'all got going on. But what you're not going to do is never get back on my line again, you weird-ass motherfucking dude. But today was your day to get exposed. Clearly, today was your day. Because I'm here to tell you. I'm at the top of the mound. I'm telling it like Moses, like I told you I was going to do. And I told you I was going to do this. Motherfucker, they, ch they chased me out the house, though. Hold on. They motherfucking pants was hanging. Hold on. God, wait a minute. Listen. Listen, I've never seen such. Thank God for the people. They were outside and shit and kids and shit. They had to stop at the door because they got the top of apartments. They got the little hallway. They had to stop at the door because there were kids and shit getting out of school and stuff. And people outside, thank God. But I hopped in my truck and with, I mean, hopped in my car and was talking hella shit. <laughs> I was talking hella shit. Boy, hey, everything I wanted to say, I couldn't say at that moment. But after I got to my car, I told them motherfuckers the truth about they trifling asses and told them how fucking dare you motherfuckers. Ugh. Ugh. And you kept on trying to tell me this one, this nigga was your cousin. So it's, was he your cousin or wasn't he? I don't know. Y'all got, I don't, I mean. Mm. And kept having them in your videos all the time. Just some dude I had never seen in a day in my life. And come to find out, you and this nigga sticking and moving. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> she said sticking and moving. <laughs> I don't know if I get out there, y'all. Because I got some shit going on. But I just, I had to just get this off of my chest. I had to just bring it to the community because this type of shit right here it gotta be stopped and if something happens to me or something like that at least you guys know the truth okay because he he's quite upset about the change of events that have occurred at this point and um uh, i don't even know who the weirdo he had with him or nothing or none of that but all that javio shit i don't care about it or none of that but the truth is the truth and it is what it is and next time take my my threats for real. I don't know. Why would we'll make, we'll make you think I won't go tell nobody? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Nigga, I don't fuck with you like that. You weird ass nigga. This, these niggas is really crazy. I'm Hallville. Okay. You're Hallville. Nigga, I'm behind the fair, bitch. I'm behind the fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? I used to live down the street from Nakia. Nigga, who cares? Who fucking cares? The ghetto boys was living next door to me. Who cares? The fuck? Listen. <laughs> I was in Hallville. Nigga, no nobody give a fuck about that shit. Y'all fucking and y'all freaking in Hallville. I've had enough of it. So, from here on out, y'all. Y'all better check these niggas out. Straight up. I mean, I'm talking about taking back to the third grade. Talk to the principal. I'm talking about we got to really start checking these niggas out because I would have never thought in a million years this nigga was going to come out of a bag like this today. This right here, it, it, it just killed my little heart because you be trusting people. You do be believing people. When they show you, you totally different from what you really thought. These niggas got on masks, y'all. They got on whole masks. Be safe out here. That's the only thing I can say is be fucking safe. Be safe. I'm I'm disgusted, but it's gonna be all right. But if anybody needs any tires, come on out, Castleton. <laughs> tons of tires. I got them all. I got tons of them. And uh, I'll get back with y'all. Okay. And as wow. I said.
Yeah, isn't that sad? Mm-hmm. And but, yeah, I think this is what happened. It because 24 hours later, yeah. let's see. Yeah, I'll say the whole no, that's not it right there. Um trying to show those who hadn't seen it um they didn't wait there i mean they was completely embarrassed um 24 hours later five o'clock metro police are asking for your help in their investigation of a morning crash and shooting that left one person dead two people in the hospital and four cars damaged our tv sixes cameron riddle is live at 30th street and lafayette road where the crash happened with what we are learning tonight cameron well, good evening. Late this afternoon, we have learned that police are now asking for the public's help in putting the pieces back together after one woman was killed and a man was injured after what uh, ended in a crash here at 30th and Lafayette Road, but may have started as a shooting. IMPD officers were actually in the area when this all began, and they tell us they actually heard multiple gunshots and then the crash. Take a look at some of this video that you are uh, that we are showing you right now. It may be hard to look at, but this is what kept the intersection closed and buzzing with police officers for at least six hours. Police tell us four cars in total were involved and the two people injured were both taken to the hospital. IMPD says that unidentified male was taken to the hospital in serious condition. The woman was also transported to the hospital with a gunshot wound but did die at the hospital. We talked to a man who witnessed the crash this morning. He says the driver of the terribly damaged blue car somehow walked away after being slammed into from behind while he was sitting at that light. And all of a sudden, the Camaro came shooting all the way down the street at least 90 miles per hour and hit the car and spent it three times. And that's when it hit the Altima. Now that witness went on to say more about what he saw, including what happened, what he saw when one of the drivers involved got out of his vehicle and walked over to one of the other cars involved. We are not yet showing you that portion of the interview just yet. Out of respect for the family, IMPD tells us they have not yet uh, finished notifying all of the next of kin. At this hour, they also have not revealed any suspects, but they have said that this shooting and crash was, quote, isolated and directed. Exactly what that means is still unclear tonight, but we are working to learn more. Coming up tonight on the news at 6, hear what a school bus driver says she heard as she was driving through this area this morning in her school bus. We're live tonight on the West Side. I'm Cameron Riddle, RTV6. Sounds like a lot to still Wow, that's, that's just sad. Mm -hmm. it is. They were going to get her either way, though. Yeah, that was going to get her either way. And you know what? I, I think people saying that, she, you know, a lot of people think she was extorting. And I, somebody got in here earlier and said, because Kim said she remembered like it was yesterday because it, it happened over, you know, not too far from her. But a lot of people said that she had issues with other people. You know, um, I, you know, I don't know. But somebody has shot up her um, her tire shop in the past. But I just think because it happened, she did that the day before, and then it happened the very next day. I I think it was those guys because those guys were were angry, and you could tell with the way she was going. She probably wasn't going. She was going to, <laughs> you know, you could tell she couldn't be controlled. And I don't think she was really extorting them. I think she was going to because she was so emotional. I think she was going to get on there and tell it anyways because she 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 was emotionally vested. Yeah. But you know, unfortunately, it cost her her life. Yeah. Um I'm a, but I'm going to tell you something, Tam. Just the mere fact that she caught them. They probably would have taken her out whether she exposed them or not. Absolutely. I think they was going to get her anyways, you know. I, I hate that she, like I said, if she was going to go live, I wish she had one live letting them know I'm on my way into Indianapolis Police Department to file a report. But mm -hmm. the fact that they chased her and then she said they, then she said they called her and told her to come back. 
Yeah. You no, know, they were trying to get her to come back. They wanted to. They, they was going to kill her. Yeah, they was going to get her uh, anyway. Hey, Auntie Fee. Yeah, they was going to get her either way it went, Tam. They were busted. And um, like I said, um, they definitely wasn't getting ready to pay her hush money. No, they weren't going to pay her no hush money. And if, if those kids, they had their pants down chasing her, they was intending to grab her and pull her back in there. If those kids had not been coming, they came out with their pants and stuff down. Mm -hmm. But didn't she say that they were with a set? They were gang members. Yeah, they were gang members. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, you know, sometimes in situ situations like that, you have to kind of know how to. You don't have to know how to deal with people like that. You know, last thing they want is for something like that to get out, and. Mm -hmm. um, I can't see it not being them two that took her out. Me neither. Me neither, because, you know, they tried to do damage control and say, no, she was just mad at him because he decided he didn't want to mess with her anymore. No. Oh, she was mad about something else. I don't believe that. She was, no, she was, she was hurt. She saw, I think she saw what she saw. Yeah, she did. She absolutely did. But it's unfortunate, and it's unfortunate that the case is still solved, you know, unsolved, I mean. Even though it might be obvious, there has to be some proof. And I'm sure with them being gang members and with the way they gun her down like that, you, you might not have a lot of people too willing to come forward at this point. Not at this point. Her family has started a page on Facebook, and they was kind of like trying to expose everything. You know, you have people getting in there anonymously, but then I think the guy himself had infiltrated the page uh, because I was in the little group too because I wanted to see what was going on. And he kind of infiltrated the page and he didn't threaten anybody, but he started saying, y'all know I didn't do this and I'm going to report this page. Well, that kind of scared people off that might have been, you know, that was dropping little nuggets and stuff. Kim says the dude put a bag on her head and he and his mother were at the casino when the shooting out. Sure was. Sure was. He and his mom went to the casino when it happened. So he had an alibi. But of course, we just we know he's sent because he's a thick guy. He's a football type, real thick guy. So we know that those little dudes that we saw were not him. They were hit. They were hit being other gang members that they probably had ordered, given an order to go do it. The guys made me. The guys may be linked in with someone important, and it will remain covered up. I was in the group that her family had on Facebook. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, I I think I think that is unfortunate. And back after point rain and Native American folk music. What's rain, Auntie Fee? What's rain and and Native American flute music? Oh, Auntie Fee plays that. It's real like relaxing music. Oh, okay. She plays it in her uh, background in her videos. Okay. Um. I don't know if y'all remember that case when uh, that college football player was messing with that. Uh, transgender lady while he was in college and he was a football player for his uh, school and uh, he lured her to a location and uh, shot her uh, pulled up on her and shot her and uh, but he wound up getting arrested and he was a nice looking young man but I'm gonna tell you something they always say you can't judge a book by its cover yeah yeah absolutely you can't, you know, you just can't look at somebody and just think uh, or know what their sexual preferences are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and some people have kinks, uh, sexual kinks that they think are normal because they may have either had to endure them or they just become attracted to them. And they, <clears throat> excuse me, they think that people should just go along with them with this, whatever whatever that sexual kink is. 
Hold on, yeah, I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're right, uh, Catalina. They do like that new um and not you know, not to be too graphic, but you know how you'll hear young girls slut me out or choke me out or do all that. To me, that's that's not for me. Don't do that because things can go wrong real fast. And hey, I don't want that. But that's that's kind of like the new thing. And I'm like, I'm not on that one. That one can miss me. But <laughs> I don't want that. I mean, you know, because you just never know when people, you know, when they don't, they just get so into it. So, you know, but people have a lot of uh, uh, sexual kinks along with their mental illness that they don't realize kind of play off the fact that they may have some issues going on or they may have themselves been abused in the past and they don't say certain things or just deal with certain issues and they act those kinks out with people who are willing to do it with them. So you have to know your person who you're sleeping with. But, you know, I'm going to tell you something. You know, yeah, people have their uh, things that they like to do or, uh, or whatever. But he here's my deal. If you're honest with somebody... It's that that to me is a more respected right, right. That is than true. uh having these uh desires but doing them undercoverly. You know right. what I mean? You want to download doing this stuff and um not telling right the person that you're with. See, yeah. I'm gonna tell you something. People have always said uh sex does not play a role in who you ultimately wound wind up being with. Um, and of course, we know what the Bible says, you're not supposed to engage in any relations until after marriage, but we know, you know, in this day and age, that's not happening, uh, mm -hmm. too often. But, um, if you have all of these, uh, desires that, or you're a certain way and you meet someone and they tell you, no, I'm not with all of that. You know, my thing is, why continue to, on in a relationship with them, right. or even be, uh, uh, or even deal with them? Because if they're not on what you're on, then you need to go uh, seek your level. How they say water seeks its level. Right. You need to find you somebody, and that's why they have all of these groups. You know, uh, like back in the day, they used to have these undercover uh, places where peep couples would go. Mm -hmm. uh, what are they, you know what I'm talking about. I can't think of the name of them, but I, uh, they used to have these undercover parties and stuff like mm -hmm. that and seek out like people. Right. You know what I mean? Or singles would go to them and then they would meet somebody that's on the same page with them. Because see, to me, the ultimate deceit is when you've been with somebody for a few years or possibly have had children by them. And those, come swing to find parties. those swingers parties. Swinger parties, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, swingers. Swingers. Yeah. So, you know, I'm all for somebody living their truth. There ain't nothing wrong with living your truth and being upfront and honest about what you like. Um, because you will probably definitely uh, run across somebody that's uh, feeling the same way you're feeling. But uh, to be totally uh, deceitful about it. Mm -hmm. That's where the problems come in at, right. you know, and uh, had this dude and I don't understand. I, I'm kind of confused. Where does she bust? Him? Did she bust him in her house? I, don't, I could never tell if it was just they were at a place or a, a bit. No, she was at she was at his house. OK, she was oh, at she his was, house. She was, there oh. with him. she was there with him and he, he was there. The, the guy that was supposed to be the cousin and she it, left. And she the main mistake and left. I guess they couldn't wait. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. She realized she left her keys, and then when she got to her car, she turned around to go back, and the door was unlocked. She said when she walked out, she didn't lock the door, and she oh, just walked okay. out, opened the door, and they was going at it. That was just within minutes. They couldn't wait for her to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, child. I'm Thank telling you. you. But, you know, I'm going to tell you something. That's not his first encounter either with that young man. See, it's no telling how long they've been dealing and then how long he may have been dealing with somebody before him. Hmm. Um, and, and that's what I'm saying. Just go on and, 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 tell, and live your truth. 
Right. I you think know. that's why she was hurt because she said he told her that was his cousin. So she said he popped up from out of nowhere and was always around with them, you know. So she thought, mm -hmm. she said, that's my cousin. So I get she probably, you know, felt a certain way that these dudes making a fool out of me. You know, she ain't no telling what he had because she was giving him money. Mm -hmm. So, she, you know, I know she probably felt a certain way. Okay. Yeah, definitely. But why hit the button on social media to out them? That's just that's the part for me that's like mind boggling. But I know that's the way people let out their anger and frustrations or hey, I got a story time, y'all get in here. Yeah, I'll but, be right back. Okay. But to me, it was just in kind of in poor judgment that fast to 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 tell it. You know, get on the phone and tell your your friend girl, but to just go and tell the whole world or whoever, like they say, their city, their community, mm -mm, that just wasn't a good look, you know, to me. Um, yeah, they may have done something wrong that, you know, offended her, but you don't know what they do with other people or other people who are involved in it, you know. So it's just one of those things that was a that, that was very dangerous and it ended up being deadly for her just you know I think if she would have went about it another way I think she may have would have been here but the fact that she was trying to shake them down for money at the same time like give me money give me money are you hurt or do you want the money which one are you <laughs> because now you're doing two different things are you are you shocked are you hurt or are you just trying to get money so you don't tell? That's why I think it kind of went left at, to me personally. Yeah, it went, it went left. It definitely went left. Yeah. But, you know, I'm going I'm to say this, too. Um, I'm trying to figure out, even after busting them, though, uh, Catalea, uh, what more, had she not done that, uh, you know, what would have been their next actions? Right. If they still had taken her out. Because right. see, exposure is exposure. Right. You don't like to get exposed, period. Right. And then when she said, you got an hour, you got an hour. So it was like, you put them on, you busted them and you put them on the clock. You didn't give them even a chance to say, well, whatever it was. It was just, it happened so fast. That's why I say the things you do, you're not thinking about it. You got to pay me. You got to pay me. But, you know, do you want the money or are you shocked? Because... Or, you know, it's just, it was so much going on and so much to unpack right there in that conversation that to me, money would have been the last thing on my mind. Yeah. But maybe that's just how she's used to, you know, doing, but, you know, not, not you, you know, bust them and you're going to shake them down at the same time, you know. It's yeah, just, I'm going I'm to tell you something. See, uh, no, I don't want no money and I don't want to be uh, involved with you anymore. Just stay out my life, do you? And mm -hmm. uh, hey, I ain't mad at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go on to live your life, but don't contact me no more. Right. I agree, Miss Kim. They were going to try to find a way to hurt her regardless. But, you know, the way she was just on it, she jumped on it so fast, she didn't give it any thought, like the repercussions, you know. Um, I have a cousin who was, uh, she's a, she's a lesbian, but she's more, well, I guess she would call her a stud. And we had to tell her, quit fighting with, with gay men. You know, they're, the thing of it is, they're still stronger. They fight different. I don't care if you think, oh, I, you lift weights, you do this, you do that. Quit, don't fight with them because you can't outman them because they're still a man. Exactly. Yeah, they're still a man. And and these transgenders, too. You ain't getting ready to uh, play with no yeah. transgender. Girl, they take that wig off, swing it around, and bust you in your head. They'll pull a, they'll pull a whole blade out their mouth and slice you, and you won't know what's coming. They'll throw acid in your face, everything. And we have to let her know, oh, just, I'm strong. No, it's not about that. They, they, have, they have more than you, no matter if they act girly or not. They are still stronger there's a stronger counterpart. And so it just don't don't put yourself in those situations. Stop meeting up to excuse me. Stop meeting up to fight with people who you don't know, especially a man that's gay, because he already strong in different ways. Like, don't count him out because he's a sissy. So you think. 
and excuse me for saying the word sissy, but you know what I mean. Don't count, don't think because he's feminine acting that he's not strong. You know, because I wouldn't want that to be my loved one because they they get right to it. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I don't care, you know, like some of these uh, young ladies that want to dress like guys and act like guys. You know, at the end of the day, you're still a female. And, uh, you know, if a man was to punch you in your face, you know, you you know, match for him without a weapon. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. if you're trying to go toe to toe with him with your fist trying to duke it out with him like you another dude, then uh, he going to treat you like a guy mm -hmm. and beat the brakes off you. Right. <laughs> right, that's true. I agree, and I think that's where a, a, that's that's why I say it, it. It's a lot of people twisted. A lot of people get that confused. Mm -hmm. They get so caught up in the masculinity, they forget that they are still a woman. Mm -hmm. And we did. We had to let her know meeting up, even if you're just fighting angel. Quit meeting up at places to fight because you do not know what's going to go on, and definitely not to fight. You know. Uh, a gay man it's just you're not on the same playing field that you know it's just it's different and you know it took you know and she did get beat up on time but i told her you bought you a good ass whooping about lesson is the best lesson because we told you to leave that alone but she had to see for herself and she never did it again but <laughs> you know, I just bought her a good ass whooping yeah. But you deserve that because you went back after we told you don't entertain that because you're thinking, oh, he's skinny, he this, he that, he's still a man. He gave her a good, a good uh egg on top of her head. But you, hey, I bet you got somewhere and sat down. Oh, yeah. That'll sit you down. Yeah, you got somewhere and sat down. I read you have an egg on your head then to uh, for him to slice you, to be able to cut you, you know, cut you up. But you, you know, go on, sit down and take your lesson and your ass whooping. But now you understand what we were trying to tell you about leave them alone. Right. Right. Yes, the gay dude taught me how to put a razor blade in my hair. Mm hmm. They did. You can put that, pull a razor blade out of anywhere. You'll be surprised. So I don't understand how some people keep them up under their tongue. I and not swallow it or nothing, Lord. I know a girl who could do that, talk to you, do hair, do everything. She have a whole blade up under her tongue. That was real popular back in the day, wasn't it, Catalina? Mm-hmm. It pulled out that blade and swipe you. You won't know what hit you. I tell you, I mean, it wasn't in wide blades like, you know, some of these wider ones. It's no, they wasn't little, wide blade. Was a little blade. single blade. Mm-hmm. It was a certain time, but the, uh, I mean, she could do it and pull it out in a minute. And I'm, when I first seen her do it, I say, now, what kind of woman is this? <laughs> but it took me by some, but she just grew up hard, like on a hard side of town. But I was thinking, now, I know life is hard, but it ain't that hard when you got to keep a blade in your mouth. You working and you got a blade in your mouth. That tripped me out for a long time until she got comfortable and then. You know, she would stop, but she kept it close. I mean, but that tripped me out to see a woman have a blade in her mouth like a woman would want, wear lipstick. She thought nothing of it. It was second nature to her. But, she you know, they said back then it was a lot of, um, when a lot of these strolls was up and running in these cities, you know, they said mm -hmm. a lot of the girls uh, did that. Right. Uh, that were working the streets. So mm -hmm. that was their form of protection. Mm -hmm. um, and you know I don't and I just want to kind of say something to everybody I don't want people to think that uh, this page is uh, anti LBGQ oh, uh, we just address the issue so that people can uh, be aware right. it's not that people are not already aware just to bring the story um, because you know I don't have a problem with none of that uh, with people. The problem that I have is when you try to hide it. Right. Okay. My, thing of it is, my thing of it is I have no problem with I have family members that are. My thing of it is just like I don't go around making my bedroom activities be a part of who I am. You should know that as an adult woman that if I have a mate 
that more than likely we have some kind of intimate or sexual act going on between us. The same way I feel about that community. They try, it's, we know that you're getting it. You don't have to just flaunt it or flaunt that, you know, flaunt it in a certain way. Not saying all of them do, but, you know, sometimes they do. They try to make everything be about their sexuality. And my thing is just be a person. And your sexuality is what you do in the privacy of your own home. Just like I'm a, a female who likes males, my sexuality, I act out in the privacy of my own wherever I'm at with my mate. We get it. We understand that that's your lifestyle, your choice. But you don't have to make it seem like everyone's against you because how you may present it. That's my thing. And to, uh, I'm not saying you have to broadcast it to the whole world. When I say be truthful, be truthful with the person that you're trying to have some kind of relationship with. Mm -hmm. You know, and I truly, too, believe in uh, that also, Catalea. You know, it's not about having skeletons in the closet. But, yeah, the whole world don't have to know your, your business. Right. Um, but, you know, at the same time, if you looking at somebody and have an interest in them, uh Tell them, tell them what you want. And right. I'm going to tell you something. I think a lot of these young ladies, too, get caught up in domestic violence because half of these men, it's so easy for them to take a woman out because that's not what they really wanted in the first place. Right. You know, um, so, you know, just have to be aware. But, you know, my question is, how do you uh, get down to the nitty gritty and, and find out and get to the bottom of that? How do you really know a person? unless they've been exposed or they tell you because outside of that you won't know unless you catch them right it's kind of one of those chances that you take like my grandmother say that's a penitentiary chance you take on getting to know someone but a lot of times and this is my sister's uh clinically trained in this and she she always says that most people who have some kind of like um what I, I hate to say retardation, but you know, some kind of um, mental illness, or they tend to be slow, or they have certain issues, they do tend to sometimes come off as hypersexed or oversexed because that's just whatever it is. So sometimes you could be looking at a person who looks normal, but they may live in a group home or they live on uh, their own and they have sexual um, urgencies or issues where. You know, we wouldn't we wouldn't think it would happen, but they may come up to you, squeeze your breasts, or try to talk. They may talk, you know, uh, nasty to you or just uncomfortable. But that's part of their illness because they're hypersexual. You know, so a lot of them they tend to, you know, you know, that's part. Not saying that all people who have mental issues that that way. That's the side effect or some things. And so she was just telling us to be, you know, just learn who you, you have to know who you're dealing with. You know, some people can, can, can mask things easy, but you know, so you, it's just about getting to know someone versus just hopping in the bed with them. And if, you know, if y'all can't work for y'all, by all means, do it for you all. You right. don't have to let right. the world, you know, the world know, you know, world right. know. that's how I feel. And you know, uh, uh, did you all see that clip? I think it was in New York where the mother was walking down the street with her three children and the dude was parked off to the side and he got out the car, ran up and tried to snatch the little uh, child and got the child in the car. And the mother and the other two kids, they fought to get the car, uh, the, the kid out the car and the kid was actually able to climb through the back passenger window on the curb side. So she was able to pull her baby through, but um, prior to him trying to abduct this small toddler, he was seen walking down the street with an older uh, white man. And I said, he was probably paid mm -hmm. to abduct a child for this white man. Right. Mm -hmm. um, did y'all see that? I did. Yeah, and I was like, bold. I said, how bold? And it was broad daylight. All right. Broad daylight. So, you know, they paying people to snatch these kids for them. Go get, go find me a kid. Go find mm -hmm. me a, a child. Mm -hmm. 
It, it, they are. It's a hub. They call it a hub. Mm -hmm. uh, like in the Memphis area, there is a hub for um, uh, traffickers, mm -hmm. which means that there is a group of people, group of people that are paid by people, wealthy people that have money and they have catalogs and they go, OK, I want the child mm -hmm. to look like this. I want to have that feature. I want to have that feature. And they walk, they ride around what they call it a catalog. Mm -hmm. They ride yeah. around with catalogs looking for what these wealthy people want. And mm -hmm. if they see yeah. a child like that and they see a mother that walks into a store with her children, they just, they, they, there's a group of them. They would distract her, you know, or either just yeah. flat out. Right. If the coast is mm -hmm. clear, try to snatch the child. Right. Y'all yeah. ever see that movie, uh, House, Hostel? Y'all ever seen Hostel? No. I've never seen it. I've never seen that one. Hostel is about um, people that are, they belong to a club and they are like filthy rich and they pay into this membership in the club to, uh, you know, torture people, do whatever they want to do because it's some kind of sick, twisted uh, fantasies and stuff that they have that they want to, you know, do to people. They want to torture them and do all kinds of stuff to them. So they actually go out and they kidnap these people. They have these people come to this uh, hostel. You know, hostel is like a hotel mm -hmm. in the southern country. And uh, they get them up in that girl, uh, abduct, abduct them, and then put them in these different rooms. And then the guys that's paid into the uh, club, they come into the room that uh, their victim is in and torture them and do whatever they want to do to them. And I said, even though it's a fictional movie, you know, stuff like that happens for real. Right. It does. It does. Even in the movie Taken, it, it goes into that, you know, it shows how they, um, you know, look for people and then they moving around so fast, you know, into different people or auctioning them off to different people. You just have to be aware you know, and teach people, not even just young kids, just just people, period. You have to be aware of your surroundings and just things that are going on because you don't know when you're being watched or looked at or admired or on, you're on someone's list for whatever it may be because they're, they're, they're um, Thank you, Cakes, for the cash out. <laughs> Their wants can go anywhere from a kid to an adult that looks a certain way. Yeah. You know, I didn't say, you know, midgets, people missing on. I mean, it's some wild stuff out here that people like. I they remember do like snuff films, and, and people do. And I don't think people know what snuff films are. Those are films, and this is so sick, y'all. This is, this is sick. Um, what they do is with snuff films, these rich people, these celebrities that we love so much that love children that like to violate children they like to do snuff films and what they do is they will kidnap a child and they will have sex with a child and they make another child um they make another child watch them no what they do is they make another child watch them and they do some terrible things. And when, as they get ready to have an orgasm, the child is so terrified when we're scared, we, re we release something in our bodies mm -hmm. that in our blood that actually makes them high. This is how sick they are. Mm -hmm. And as, and when they get ready to have an orgasm, they blow the child's brain out as they do that. What? Oh my God. This is what they do. Okay. I wasn't ready for that one. Really? I'm not, I don't it's a, it's it's something what they do to kids. It's it is absolutely treacherous what they do to kids. That's why I y'all always hear me. I haven't gotten into a deep like I'm going to. I'm gonna start talking about stuff like that. People that have been um I'm gonna start having quite a few people on here. Yeah. But um it's it's something what they do to kids and some of these people have lived um lived through it. And they and they they go up they go on shows and talk about it. Right, right. Wow, I, I this is my first time ever hearing of a snuff film. I'm 
um, that's not, I'm not saying I'm interested in it, but I am, I do want to learn about it. So, cause it's a lot of things, um, that you just need to know about. I had to tell my little cousin the other day he was playing, he's only six or seven, but he was playing with some neighborhood boys. And I think they're at the age where they're starting to get hot. So I was like, hey, don't do that. You can't go in there with them or you can't, you know, no covers. It's hot outside because they don't have anything to experiment on because they can't get girls. They just having the feelings in their body. And I don't want him to be, you know, subjected to their abuse because they're just trying to find out a feeling or they heard this or they seen this or that. And he's just a kid that's, you know, hey, just want to have fun and he'll go along with it, not knowing that, hey, this is not supposed to be happening. But I saw it in one little boy and I was like, no, 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 you're not going to be able to come here and do that. And I talked to his mother and she said, yeah, we've been dealing with that. We don't know how to you know, we don't know what to do with it. But, hey, now he's starting to prey on little children. That's not a good thing. And he's a kid himself. I don't know what y'all look looking at, but y'all need to either, y'all need to get him some help because he is, like, you know, that's, it's, it can be a, a bad thing at hand mm -hmm. coming about. Because if I hadn't saw that, my little cousin would have went into that room with him not knowing what was going on, you know, thinking they're playing. But, and he, you know, he's too little to see it. I just happened to catch it. And, you know, his mom was like, yeah, I, I was a little bit ashamed about it. So that lets me know you you knew about it. And I understand finding the resources, but you can't have him around other kids like that, knowing that that's what he's doing it for. Like, you yeah. I would be interested in knowing if there's some sort of chemical imbalance because see, you know, you do have children abusing other children sexually. And, he, yeah, and he, I actually he want on, he's on medicine. He's on medicine. He is on that little boy is on medicine. That's the one who's acting out. So I'm not surprised by that. But I'm like, you still need to get him some resources, talk to his counselor. To let him know he's exhibiting behaviors, you know that um, that are that's that's hurtful to him and other people because you know he's a kid. He's not a you know he's not even a young kid. He's just like maybe what maybe he's not even middle school yet, but he's still a kid. But he's trying to find people to try things out on that he's seen. You know he even talks dominating like do this, do that. I'm thinking. Who are you dominating? Like, where did they come from? Why are you so dominating to a person or a kid that you're not like that with a bigger kid? He only does it to people he think he can, you know, easily get away with it with. So that lets me know he's practicing on, you know, on a younger child. But not on my cousin, not on my watch. Now, I ain't going to have it happen. If I see it, I'm going to call it without shaming him and that's why I went to his mom because I was comfortable and she was like yes this has been going on but he has sisters you have to be careful you know it's other people you just can't say we don't know what to do because that can open up and lead to a lot of other things and I'm not trying to get in their family business like that I just know I didn't want my family violated but his you know they shouldn't be violated either because he's he's wherever he's at in life whether it's his medicine or just natural growing up, they should they need to get that under control. Hold on, guys. Okay. Well, you know, in some instance, some cases they say that, oh, it's learned behavior, you know, kids act out what is done to them, but not necessarily, not in all cases. Uh -uh. You know, that's why I say I have to wonder, I would love to talk to a person that is in psychology to see uh, if there's some kind of imbalance, chemical imbalance in the brain, you know, if it's uh, something genetic, yeah. you know what I mean? And it usually tends to, it usually 
does they usually do tend to have a chemical imbalance that makes them it's called hypersexuality sometimes they have none of or the most part they're very hyper that's why if you go to group homes and they're adults most of the time they have either sterilized them they're on birth control or they're just like heavily monitored because the one thing you can't take away from them is the right to have like sex but they do make sure that you know you can't they can't per se reproduce because that is just a byproduct of them being special needs i i hate to say the word retardation but having special needs that's you know having hypersexuality is one of them Mm-hmm. Jacqueline Williams said, most of the times when you start peeling the la- the layers back, he was done like that himself. I believe that. I believe that because of his, I can see that as far as with the young man I'm speaking about. I can see it. I, you know, someone did him like that. And it's like now it's just someone else's turn. But, you know, and I was saying this to another cousin of mine. He was saying that, oh, I'm gay. And I was like, well, how do you know you're gay? He was like, because I something, something. So I was like, have you been with a female? He said, no. I said, have you been with a male? He was like, no. Well, how do you know? He was like, he said, I guess I should just say I'm turned on to them. And I'm like, I hear what you're saying, but don't say you're something that you may not be that. You're just claiming the title and you've never even committed the act to know if you like it or not. And he was like, I hadn't thought about it like that. You know, you just say you're attracted to, you know, this or that at this time, but you haven't had the committed the act to even know that you may like it. You may be repulsed by it. Not saying I was telling him to be, he could be repulsed by a woman and a man. He might say, this ain't for me, but just don't label yourself because that's what you see everyone else doing. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes I question, like, even uh, you've heard cases of little kids, you know, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, you know, you started watching their, uh, how they act. Mm -hmm. That's why I was talking about the chemical imbalance because, you know, you see uh, some smaller kids, you might have a little baby boy. He likes to play with, uh, do girly things, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and he's fascinated with uh, women's dress up and makeup and stuff like that at an early age. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. It's not necessarily because anything has been done to him, but uh, it's just something inside of them that, uh, you know, it, 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 it's something on the inside that just right. makes them, because uh, you've heard people say, well, I was born this way. Right. And I've never argued that point because uh, they very male, very well may have been born that way uh, in their minds, you know, something in the brain. Right. Yeah. Even my cousin uh, who I told you who was, uh, and I think she was more non-binary, but I noticed at an early age, I kept telling her mom about four or five because she lived in the house with us. You need to you need to take her to an endocrinologist. She's having some hormonal issues going on. And she was like, what you mean hormonal? I was like, you know, she had to start using deodorant early. I noticed like she was getting like a little male pattern baldness. I was like, get her to an endocrinologist so they can correct what's ever wrong. Well, she took her maybe like 10 10 years later when she was starting to like blossom well she had some other like um like her breast deformity that was one thing and so when the doctor uh did her lab work he was like mom you know for one she's literally like a boy trapped in a girl's body because of how just how she was made her hormones her you know not saying that you did anything wrong or you know, something happened. It's just, that's how nature does sometimes when the body is, you know, trying to create itself. And it's like, she's just, she's, she's kind of like trapped. But if you had brought her in earlier, we could have done that. But to do it now, unethically, I wouldn't do, I, it's, it would be unethical for me to do it because it would be creating like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde to find the right 
to find the right uh, medicines to correct what she needs because right now she's out testosterone th- through throughout her body. She has very little estrogen. Yes, yeah. she like a female. Chromosomes, yeah, they have more, yeah. Yeah. Imbalance, imbalance in the uh, chromosomes. Right, and he was like, to play with that right now will be unfair to her as a person. So let's work on this and get to this. And then when she gets older, uh, 18 or 20, cause like or 20, let her slowly start deciding where she needs to be, where she feels comfortable, and then we'll go from there. But right now, because you didn't bring her in early enough, she's just, it's like she's just trapped, you know, she's trapped. But that's just nature. That's one of those things that you can't say, oh, I was a bad parent. I was this. Her numbers were just, she's she has a female looking body, but it has weird, some deformities. But she was had all male testosterone in her. So he was like, that's why she's getting that, because she's really like a boy trapped in a girl's body. So, you know, right now, all you can do is get her counseling, support groups, you know, use the resources that are there until she can get comfortable with what's going on in her own body. Because she wasn't, she didn't like it either. She was like, this is the weirdest feeling in the world. But her mother took her too late. And I noticed it about five or six. Not so much the sexual part. Her body was just showing certain things that, hey, she needs some. She needs to go see an endocrinologist to let them look deeper into what's going on. Developing body hair at certain parts. You know, it's just certain things you have to look at and to know and not wait till the last moment, you know, and do it. So you have to educate yourself as a parent, too, and know your children and know the things that, what to look for when they're showing that, hey, my chemical my chemical imbalance may be out of whack or my child's my child may be having an issue with chemical imbalance. You have to be able to spot that without fussing at them because it, it's a real medical issue. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, hey, ladies, I'm going to hop down so I can uh, yeah. get myself together, okay? okay? And I was getting ready to, to say because I'm getting ready to I'm a, I know we. It's been three hours, and I um, I was going to. I appreciate you, ladies, coming up. And okay, Tam, I'll be in the chat you. in the comments. You welcome. Right. Love you. Love Thank you, you Demon. Love you. Love you, Kalea. Okay. okay. Well, you guys, I wanted to thank you guys for coming up. You know, I was getting calls and stuff. I, I still have to. I be working. I guess two and three things. As I, I appreciate the ladies for coming up and keeping the conversation and stuff going. Um, when I have to step away, but I want us to talk about Jane Warfield because, you know, we see so many young women losing their lives and it's a lot of things that are happening on social media, right? Um, I feel like whether she had put it on social media or not, she would have lost her life because she actually saw them. And it kind of goes back to, I wouldn't say it was domestic violence. I would say it kind of goes back to what we're starting to see now where people are taking other people's lives because they, you know, you're not doing what I want you to do, you know, um, or um, you did something I did not want you to do. And so I, even even with her exposing them, taking her life was still violating her. They 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 did. That was a, a criminal offense. They completely they violated her. You know, um, it wasn't right what she did. But I, I, you know, according to some of us, some people would say they they was, she should have did it. Some people would say that it's a matter of opinion. But what they did to her wasn't was not a matter of opinion. It was a complete violation and against the law, you know. And so we're starting to see that more and more. Unfortunately, her case is cold now. I plan on doing a part two to this because I have a cousin that works with with uh, Indianapolis Police Department. I had already talked to him about this and. He said that he would come on and get the investigator that is on this case to come on to talk or give us, you know, to talk about the updates or whatever and what is going on with this case and kind of enlighten us on what's actually going on. Because even though we we have an idea of who did this, you know, there still has to be some proof. But I intend to bring stuff like this to the forefront. Uh, these ladies that are losing their, their lives, either way it go, those men had no right to take her life. 
you know, because it was not their life to take. If they wanted to take a life, take their own damn life, not hers. So uh, we definitely want justice for Jane Wadfield, regardless to whether she should have, whatever she did, because I know uh, people, when this happened, you had people with the LGBTQ community getting on, and I couldn't understand this one especially with all of the atrocities and all the wrongs that happen in the LGBTQ community, because I've always said no gay person should be killed simply because they're gay or they're transgender or whatever. But I had, they was getting on saying, well, she should not have outed them. She should not have outed them. She would still be alive. There was a lot of people in that community saying that when we've always stood behind, I know I have behind the LGBT community saying nobody should lose their life based on what they choose to do with their you know based on their sexuality so i did not understand that one a person can out whoever they want they ain't nobody got no right to take their life right so um i definitely did not agree with that i didn't i do not agree with them taking her life and we want justice for her so there'll be a part two to this one once i get my cousin on here i'm going to talk to him tonight or the investigator that is on it um, him or, or, or him, you know, cause he knows about the case too. And, um, we'll continue this, but y'all, this is what we're, we're, we're going to start, start talking more about. Of course, I know that we kind of, we talk about the Dawes case all the time. There's, there are no updates on the Dawes case. There are no updates at this point, but every time that there are updates, we we're going to, we're going to talk about it. You know, whenever there are updates, we're definitely going to, uh, talk about the updates. Um, on the Dobbs case. Um, but I think we've covered everything up to this point, you know, and we want just to, uh, as it relates to that, we've squeezed all the juice, you know, um, and Young Dolph is going to get justice, you know, and like I said, when there are updates, we're going to talk about it and bring the real on that. But there are other people that need us also. They need for us to talk about their cases and to uh, give more exposure to their cases. There are a lot of families um, that need some justice and you'd be surprised about who know about something and will be willing to talk at this time. You know, once they see us talking about it, you know, they might decide to call the police department and hopefully somebody, you know, the people that did this, to, that know about what happened to Jane, hopefully they will do that. You know, that lady had children. She was running a tire shop. That man should have told her. Like she said, he should have told me. I would have gone another route. I'd have went on live to let him know that I'm on my way to the damn police. Look at me. I'm in front of the police department, nigga. I'm getting ready to file a report on you. Because when they chased her out, that was a sign that they was going to do something to them and uh, uh, to her. They didn't chase her for nothing. And the fact that she knew their secret they was going to do something to her anyway. She should have just went and laid low and waited and not even went to that tire shop because they got her on her way to her tire shop. And, you know, she had a yellow car, so it would have been easy to recognize that and just waited. And, you know, of course, file her police report because she had been around them. She knew what type of dudes that they were. Normally when they're ignorant and evil, you, 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 you know, uh, and, I, and I think that's one of the reasons that she went live, too, because she said, if anything happens to me, they did it. I think one of the reasons she went live, and which is a good thing, was to let everybody know this is what it is. She did get that documented on live, right? So I have no doubts at some point that the case is going to be solved. It's just a matter of, you know, I, I'm sure they have a lot of things to go on in Indianapolis. They got a lot of crime up there. I know the other half of my family is there. So there'll be justice at some point, but we definitely want justice for her. And we're going to get the investigator on here. Um, if the investigator, if the in, investigator can't come, we're going to get Boo on here. That's my cousin that works for the police department to talk about this case because he knows the case. And I think he said he was familiar with, he knew the girl, the young lady. So um, to talk about this, to get some justice for this young lady, you guys. And for, for my members, I put something in there for you guys. And I, I, I want us to work on some of this stuff as a team, right? Um, as far as spreading awareness on domestic violence, 
on um, cold cases, on missing persons, on, on harassments. Um, all of these are violations of, of humans. And so we're going to start having these experts and stuff on here um, to come on to let you all know what you can do when you've been violated. When if you know about a crime or something like that, you know, some of the things that you can do so that we can start helping our community and so you can keep yourself safe and or you won't have to go through a lot of this stuff. You know, these are violations and there are laws against that. Thank you, Jeff. So we're going to start having some of these people on, on here. Uh, I'm getting some stuff situated right now to have someone on here. And I'll be able to tell you all about that, of course. Hopefully next week, you guys. Um, we'll have Amy Wyrick on here. Uh, we kind of have been hitting and missing because every time we schedule, we, we end up, if it's not her, it's me rescheduling. But hopefully uh, we can get, she'll be here by Wednesday. Um, her dad, who is a campaign manager, said he's going to try to see to it. And um, and then some more people with some informative information. And as I said before, I'm going to make Amy, I'm going to do it. What I'm going to, I plan to do is for my members so that you all can directly ask her. You know, of course, we know we can't ask her questions about Young Dog. I know that's what everybody want to know about. Uh, she would not be able to directly answer questions about an ongoing case, right? Because Young Dolph's case is an ongoing case. But you all could definitely ask her. I want to make her available to you all. And then we will I'll release it and make it public after that, right? That's something that I want to do for my members, as well as some more things that I'm working on for my members, okay? And making it a live chat. But I'm getting ready. I, this has been a good informative live, y'all. And it's always about that, you know. Um, it's always about being informative and um, trying to educate each other on certain things, you know, because a lot of times I hear people say, well, this happened to me and I just didn't think that I could do nothing about it. Of course, it could be something done about it. You know, I think a lot of times a lot of these reports that people file, they file with the police department, which is good. But a lot of stuff that that happens to you, you 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 could file it with the F, over at the FBI and it will get because a lot of these crimes are federal. Sometimes that's why they kind of those cases kind of sit up because they have to transfer them anyways. Whereas if you knew directly where to go, as you know, with a lot of this stuff. Um, it could be st starting to get handled immediately because with the police department, if it's a federal crime, then what they're going to do is they're going to transfer it over to the FBI anyways. That's how it works. And sometimes it might take a little longer. Whereas if you knew directly what to do, you could you could go file the complaints directly with the FBI, right? Um, because you can do that, right? If it's a federal crime. Okay. Hotcake says, love who you love. Just be respectful to others no matter what. Stay blessed up and safe. Everyone have a blessed night. Thank you, Hotcakes, for coming in. Thank you so much. And I absolutely agree with you all. But y'all, I have really enjoyed y'all today. I always appreciate d -Mon. That's my sis. I appreciate Miss Catalea for, for both of them for always having my back. Miss Kimberly, I saw Miss Hakia in there she, here. She told me she had to go. Miss Monica J., um rest in peace young doll um i saw him in here a little earlier i don't know if he's gone uh black swan kawana who else is in here i'd like to acknowledge everybody i like to acknowledge people especially if you're new and i would like to know the states you know that you're from you don't necessarily have to give me the city i just like to know the state that you're from thank you catalea uh who else is in here uh is rest in peace young doll still up in the house or is he gone? Uh, Jacqueline Williams. I see Miss Kimberly Wilson. That's one of my moderators. I appreciate you, Kimberly. Uh, who else before I get out of here? Joy loves God always riding with me. Thank you, Joy loves God. She's in the house. Uh, Natural born queen is always riding with me. I appreciate you, Miss Queen. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else is in here? Y'all, we weren't on that long today. Yolanda, did everyone release the video? Did she ever release the video? 
uh did she ever did she ever re-release the video are you talking about miss jane janae miss yolanda um absolutely miss deborah in the house miss deborah always riding to this one of my members shout out to my members for being dedicated uh, monica j dropped some names that i'm gonna start doing some research on on the, that's in her city her state um i watch but don't always come in hey eric jackson i'm glad you come in i'm glad to have you love um in her state so i'm gonna I'm start looking into that too because i know uh yeah i'm gonna start looking into that all right y'all i have really enjoyed y'all i got some i got some some baked chicken on and i'm gonna put some cream of um celery on top no i got some cream of mushroom and garlic it's cream of mushroom mixed with garlic it it was it, it tastes so good on 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 the chicken so i'm gonna do that some chicken with some cream of mushroom and a small pan of baked macaroni I know that's pasta. I shouldn't be eating it. But guess what? I start my personal trainer tomorrow. So <laughs> I guess I need to do a last hurrah, huh? Because he said he got something for me since I since I didn't since he got me right the last time and I gotta come back. He said, I got something for the people that relapsed. He said I relapsed. <laughs> I did a full relapse. Let's see. Um Shout out to the Bush people. Thank you all for coming in too. Make sure you hit the like button for sure, Catalea. Shout out to all the Bush people. Make sure y'all hit that like button on y'all way out. I appreciate y'all so much. All of my all of my people that communicate in the chat and all of my Bush people, I appreciate you just the same. Just please hit the like button, okay? All right, you guys. I want y'all to uh to have a good night. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later.